good? Yes. Okay. Good morning. I would like to uh, open up the Village Council uh, work session meeting, March 26, 2020, 9 a.m. Village Hall. I show uh, present, we have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Vandenberg, uh, Councilman Lean, myself as mayor, uh, Robert Epps is absent, and we have, I believe, Councilman Mark Elise on the phone. Is that correct? Yep. All right. And uh, he had called in ahead of time saying he would not be able to be here in person, so we have that document. And I think we have staff, given the circumstances, we have staff, both Barbie, our clerk, and our planner, Rohit, on the phone as well. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. And obviously, Christina Elfin. So we're going to get going to open up the, uh, the first up on the agenda is uh, we need to uh, approve the agenda. Do we have any changes? Um, I want to add under items of discussion. Uh, so that would be 13. Um, we just need to change the location for the April 7th meeting to... Uh, change what meeting? The April 7th meeting. We're, we need to change the location to the Fellowship Hall. So you want to add discussion? Yeah. As a yeah. to village to hall? Yeah, to Fellowship Hall to and we're at the church. And at what meeting is that? April 7th. We were, gonna, um, we were gonna just change that at this meeting. So amend the cancel calendar. Uh, okay, yeah. amend calendar, yeah. okay. As items of business number 14, it looks like I misnumbered. That's, oh, did yeah, you? that's, yeah, add, that, that add would be 14. 14. Okay. okay, that's 14, okay. And then 15, um, we need to, I'd like to add <clears throat> a rules of procedure uh, discussion for electronic meetings um, per recommendations from the uh, village attorney and that's what you were referring to here okay and that would be number 15 okay and then we need to add I guess we can do um, uh, we need to add review of action item not review of action items but like the packet it's not even in here is it yeah, so okay we won't worry about that but then you want to add uh the whole the open topics you want to add yeah we, we i think that was missed uh just open topics for any things last minute that came up that uh, okay. we want to so, discuss so new f that's just make that open topics uh, uh can, can i interject for just a moment sure um one of the reasons why the it wasn't added on your agenda it's probably because you need to um, update your rules or procedure to accept that open topic scanner on the agenda so maybe um, that should be part of the discussion it's, in, um, it's in number 11 but it's it's, it's but an agenda item so if we if we throw it on the agenda I they can still add it Barbie they'll, they'll still add it and then moving forward we will we, put it as a recurring yeah, we, we directed staff to put it on there. It's not on there, so now we're going to add it on there for this meeting and we're going to discuss it at number 11 for going forward. Okay, all right. Okay. So, so new F would be open topics, then G would be agenda items, H would be closed session, and I would be adjournment. Is that right? Wait, and that's on F? Yeah, so new F. The new F would be open topics. Okay. So then G would be agenda item. H would be closed session. And I would be adjournment. Okay. God bless you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, got it. Anything else? Robert, do you have anything? I mean, Bob. Uh, no. I, 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 I was going to bring up. Oh yeah, you're welcome. All right. Okay. Councilman Lee, do you have anything? Nope. Nothing. And yeah, we have a holding spot, so that's open for anything. So, okay. Um, good. I'll need a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. So moved. All's in favor. Aye. 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 All right. First is uh, 
Uh, up we have presentations, uh, nothing there. Village Hall, 10 minutes. Is that you, Christina? Yes. And Rhett, for some reason, this thing is not letting me log in. Oh, here it goes. Okay, so a couple of things have transpired since the last meeting. You all had advised us to um, kind of look at the lease terms. Can, can you hear me, Councilmember Mark Lease? I can hear you. Okay. Um, you all had advised me to look at the, the ground lease terms and try to put some numbers to those, um, to some of those issues that we may be facing um, to try to really get a projected cost on that project and co compare apples to apples. And what I've done is since met with our financial advisor that we hired, and they've come up with this model. Um, unfortunately, he is unable to really pinpoint a lot of the costs that are associated with a long-term lease. So we really need to look at maybe potentially hiring an engineer to say how much we're going to save or gain by running water and sewer, groundwork, site work, how things will change. This, do you have a question? No. Hey, Bob, can you just mute yourself on your end until you need to talk? We've got a lot of reverb on our end. And you guys okay. can, thanks. Can y'all do the same, Barbie and Redhead? Yeah, I'm muted. We did. Okay, thanks. Um, so what this basically is, what you're seeing here, and, and I know some of you that aren't, aren't in attendance can't see this model, but this is uh, something that we will use in the next couple of months to really determine what options are the best for us to uh, implement a new village hall. Can y'all see that from afar? So basically, we've, we've put in the projected cost of the bids that were received down at the street. Um, we, we can change this amount. We can put in, we can come in here and change it to, let's just say, well, maybe not let me change it. <clears throat> okay, I don't know why it's doing that. Let me, let me do one thing. All right, well, I'm having some technical difficulties, but um, I should be able to change this amount in here and it's not working for some reason. So we're just, I'm just gonna show you how the model works for option one. Basically what would happen is if we wanted to change this amount, like let's say we got different scenarios. Right now we only have one, which we actually have dollar costs associated with it. So we put in that number, which is 1.8. We've put in what we have in capital right now, which is 860. So the model actually takes that 860 out and says, all right, you're going to finance the difference. So um, we'll come down here and we'll look at the financing in just a second. But there will be a cost of issuance for any debt financing that we have. We're going to have to get a bond agency to kind of help hold our hand through the process if we, if we go out for bonds. Um, if we just want to go out for leasing, we can do that. It's going to be a very small amount that's associated with the cost. You mean financing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we just put that in there, and we estimated really high. I mean, just just to be safe. And that's if we go out for bonds. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Versus. Okay. I got if you. we go out for lease or for uh, for financing, just like with banks, it's not even going to be a fraction of this, if anything. We would just take that out. So we put in the finance terms at fifteen, and that's really on the low end. We can bump it up to thirty or forty if we want to. Um, and then we put in the interest rate, and then this lease of land basically means that if we're building down here, we don't have the lease amount here anymore. So that is turned off. We can turn it on, and it changes the amounts. So I'm going to turn it off for right now so you can see what the impact is. So over the course of 15 years, if we're financing the difference, here's going to be our payments annually for 15 years, and that's what it means tax impact was just for this project alone. So, um, I, I don't understand that. Yeah. Okay. Let's move down here. So we're doing a fit the same. You're putting in a 15 year term. Yeah. We're assuming 3% interest. Yep. Um, the project cost is 
essentially one 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 eight forty minus one eight forty. Um, and then they're they're minusing out this eight sixty. So whatever that difference is, a million so dollars. These principal interest that you have down below sixty five thousand mm -hmm. three thirty three. That's in the first year. Yes. We've paid. We will have paid. That's the projected paid amount. In it's twelve over, months. It's over fifteen years. Mm -hmm. It's a fifteen year term, so it's going to be much higher. It's but but the tax impact. That's what I don't understand. Is that like ninety five cents or it's it's point nine five okay yeah. of like one cent. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, you can't see that very good from okay. where you're at. Um, I was like, oh. <laughs> let me see if I can change it in here. I might be able to change it here. So our payments are fifty four hundred dollars a month approximately for that first. Hang on one second. Sorry. That'd be about right. For the first year. Actually, that does seem high. Mm, where is it enabled? Is that what rates are? Three percent? You know. I'm sure we can get it for lower. I well, mean, that, I mean, well, they're I just dropping like a. You really have to look at the formula in the in the in the cell in the Excel spreadsheet to see how it calculates that up. I'm just trying to see why it's not letting me cha make changes. Because that still seems. That, is it? Sorry. A three percent on a fifteen. I wish I, I normally have my real estate calculator here and can do that like that in my. I've got a loan calculator. What what some? No, it's it it figures out <coughs> interest rates and all that kind of stuff and term and you just plug it in and it shoots it right back out at you. So I can quickly, based on just the loan amount, not taxes and insurance that kind of stuff, but just a loan principal and interest. Basically, I don't, I don't know why it's not letting me change. See, what it I don't understand is why is it's not why it's not showing us the figure of the, the finance figure. Because right now you've got, you've got. Rohit, do you know why this wouldn't be working on the computer? Does it work? Um, it works on my computer. Wait, you're doing something that's working on your computer that's not working on. That yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, then there's some instructions on the keyboard. Um, if you do that, then it should fix it. <laughs> no, it's no, it's it's showing. It's projecting. That's fine. It's just. It's not letting me enable. It's not computer. It's not figuring in when she changes the number. It's, it's not. It's like refiguring. It's, it's like it's restricted. Is there any pop-ups on the screen that says enable? No, anything? that's that's what I was looking for. I can't. The top of that screen. Was what were you saying, saying, Jamie? The. It's. I don't see the figure. You see how what we were saying was you had a million eight, and you take the eight hundred thousand out. I'm gonna open up the file on my computer and see if I can replicate it. See the million eight. Yeah. If you take the equity out, let's just round it and say it's eight hundred. So that sh you should be financing one million. Right. Okay. I don't see the one million anywhere. It's over on the output. It's nine eighty at the top. Right. So yeah, that, is that what you're saying? Right amounts. there. Right, but where, but where is the one million? Because if you take the village equity contribution, if you take that out, it shouldn't be total sources of. He wants to see the one million equals right. ninety four. Right. Yeah. So that's. And I can't. I can't get to the form. Okay. So the sixty five thousand represents a loan at one million dollars. Okay. Right? What are you doing exactly? I'm not I trying to do the same thing. Yeah, so but I'm trying to change like the you're right. project um, costs. Uh -huh. And it it's still not seems me a little change five thousand dollars. Well, that's probably right. The project cost at three percent, fifty. It lets me change it on my computer. And then, but uh -huh. here to your point, I don't understand where your tax impact. It's in point nine five in a cent. Okay. It's not so ninety five it cents. You. It's point nine five of one for of one cent. So it's almost a cent. Right. Almost I thought it was nice. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. So the effect, and this is every year that we'd have to consider the next year would I'm, be. I don't think we'd have to raise. I think you don't have, have to raise so. taxes every year. I don't think year. so. I think yeah, it won't do it. So it affects the tax. It actually puts more money in the coffers in the sense that. Yeah, for afterwards. For I think I think that are you, you in the V drive right now? Yeah, I'm in the V drive, but I just have the. 
I'm not sure. Uh, I've already done that three yeah. times. Uh, office equipment. Uh, um, A B all that kind of stuff. That, like, the, like the projected like this cost that, uh, the lowest one to the, 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 the I've already done it, so it's a little higher, okay. but that's not. Do the, do me a favor, so real fast, up. on your uh -huh. end. Change the projected cost in the input uh -huh. section to a million dollars. One million. Okay. And then change the financing terms to. Let's just say thirty. Is that? Thirty years. What's yeah. The and then the interest rate to four. Eight hundred thousand or eight sixty. Eight sixty. Eight sixty. And just save that real fast. Uh, save that real fast on um, on the V drive, and I'll just pull it up. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna save it as, and uh, I'll just pull it up. Tell me where you're saving it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna save it under just the base administrator folder. Okay. Um, and. What's the title? It's just the same thing with uh, extra numbers. Uh, installment financing model with uh, 1 million 30. Got it. Now you just clicked read only. So now you can't change yeah. it. Hang on. Oh, yeah, I have to close it. I have to close it because I had it open. Okay, try opening it again. Try it now. Tim's right. Okay. So this is, um, I still can't change it, but I got him to change some amounts so y'all can see the difference. How do you know you can't change it now? Doing the same thing. They really ignore that, but the price went up. Oh, because we're at four percent. There. There we go. Twenty-eight million. All right. So. I asked them all. <laughs> 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 no, let me try mine again. Hang on. Finance. There we go. You okay, we're good now. Right? I don't know what, what <laughs> happened. Okay. Maybe Rafe right was in it and it was it was read only. All right, so the amount initially was one eight. Was here. Yep. So let's say there was another option we wanted to consider that was a million. That, okay. That's how it would be impacted. It would be point one seven of one cent. One cent. Yes. Okay. So yep. it's not even a penny. So but if we raised so we came in and had a, correct me if I'm wrong, we wanted to get another officer and finance town hall. We're looking at poverty two cents to do that. Yes. Okay. So, and that's if you have, that's de depending on what project you pick for Village Hall. You know, if it's going to be a $1.8 million project, if it's going to be a million dollar project, if it's going to be a 1.5, whatever. One, right. And right. we pick. have to do that by the time we pass the budget, correct? Or can we raise taxes at any point we want to? No, you can't. You can't, you can't no. do that. No. So we have to make a decision. Yes, if you're going to do it this year, tax-wise. Okay. Now, now keep in mind though that if you're going to do Village Hall, you're probably not going to have a payment to come due until the construction is completed. Correct. So right. you, you should be okay to do it for next year and still start the project. Okay. That makes sense. Because we have enough in the coffers to. Yes, use. you can make but, a few but, payments, but yeah. But we have to be prepared to then go ahead and raise it next year. Like it's not even a question. It's it has to be done. But so here again, this is worst case scenario. One point eight is cost of issuance forty thousand. That's a very small, low fifteen year term. It's basically one cent. Now, if you want to go over here and change the financing to let's say thirty years, and let's just say worst case scenario, let's just say four. 0.5%. Okay. Wait, go back and change the financing term. Oh. Yeah. It even reduces it even further. So. But it's still, I mean, you can, can you, I mean, I guess you could raise it 0.65. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Of a penny, right? You could, yeah, for sure. But this just kind of shows you how it works and how the model is going to work. So what's going to happen when, so there's two things that are going in conjunction with this. If you really truly want me to figure out the, the cost of these um, terms and some of the the associated savings that may be taken with reduced site work and adding uh, water sewer. I'm really going to need to hire an engineer. I can get AMT to do it. I've already talked with them about giving a real good cost estimate of how much it's going to cost. 
Rohit and I can tell you how much we think it's going to be based on our expertise, but really we need to have someone who knows what they're doing to come in and justify those numbers. Well, I mean, don't we think that we're at that point where we need to make that decision? Like we're, I mean, it sounds like the church is on board if we want to do it and it monetarily makes sense. So I feel like we need to have hard numbers before we can really move forward. And, and, and I'm okay with that, but I think we do need to get a little bit of confirmation with the elders and the church of where they're at and stuff like that. The only thing that throws a flag up for me, quite frankly, is an agreement that we would have to tear this building down and what we can find as they noted if there's asbestos and stuff and all of a sudden we have a well there's that's what we talked about last meeting like there's negotiation points that we can but we just leave it and for them to to, to do it I, I mean what i'm yeah. saying is we would stay I here before i think it'd be an added plus for them to keep it here because if scott's not going to be there forever mm. And if you were sitting here, you would say, I'm not going to be here forever. So that's an added incentive for someone coming in to be able to use, possibly use this as a parsonage or living, living quarters or right. whatever they want, you know, community center and stuff. They just, yeah, that would be on them. But that, that's where we start knocking things down and we don't know what we're getting into. It's just, yeah. but use it as a, continuing space to operate until we can get that. I think that would... And we can estimate that in at worst case scenario, so we can have that amount and then we can have best case scenario. So we um, know kind of a fluctuation. Okay, and then we had talked about, Joe had mentioned it briefly in the last meeting and then John Jones had mentioned it to me, so I mentioned it to you, talking to this church. And I've reached out to them. Yeah. They will have a meeting in the beginning of May is, right. is when they will get back to us. She said that... Um, they do use it for certain purposes. And I told her, you know, we, we would be up for negotiations if we wanted to reserve a spot for them to continue to, to, to offer services, whatever it is. And that, you know, that's up for discussion when we get to that point. So I did let her know that she's gonna present. You let her know what? That if, that, cause they still have services there. Okay. And she was pretty, she was, she said that she didn't think that they were gonna be interested in doing anything because they still use it a lot. And I said, well, there may be an option that if we had like an assembly room or something, y'all could still carry out your services in our facilities and we can work I through that. Okay. And that's just details we would have to work through if y'all are willing to, to allow that. Well, I mean, I think when we build Town Hall, we're willing to allow HOAs yeah. to come yeah. in and use the assembly room. So I don't know why we wouldn't be willing to do that as well. So. And that was kind of my thought process behind it. And that's just, you know, we'll discuss it when we get to that point, if they're willing to look into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are y'all of the consensus that it's okay for me to consult with AMT to go ahead and get some dollar costs associated with it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bob? Yes, I'm listening. Do you have any uh, comments or you're okay with us moving forward with uh, AMT? No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, let's move forward. Okay. 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 All right, we didn't forget about you just because you're not here. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> when, you, when you address me, I just have to make sure to put this thing on mute. You yeah. know, unmute it. Yeah. So yeah. It doesn't appear. All right. So basically, just so y'all know, moving forward on this financial analysis, this is kind of how it's going to work is they're going to have a layout of all the different options. They're going to have Village Hall. We've got to pick Village Hall option first, whatever that means financially. Then they're going to have the cost of service for solid waste, what's in our CIP now. Um, law enforcement and they're gonna isolate it all out so you'll see exactly if you want to do all these things this is how much it's going to be but the model is going to be the exact same so you'll see that tax impact and you can turn on and off certain projects let's say solid waste is just too much we don't want to talk about it so we'll turn it off and then you see how all the other projects associate with the said tax impact. Right? So Jamie this is all my understanding, or maybe it's a question for you, Christina, is this is all one lot. This property here extending all the way there. So are we getting into, because I think if I'm not mistaken is you have in a lease situation, you have someone paying property taxes on the land, somebody paying property taxes on the actual building and that gets separated. So would they subdivide or did be a cost in subdividing or is there just an and i don't know maybe this is a question for the tax man that do they look at that little parcel where we're putting in how much are we 
are we actually getting as far as par parking and all that, what that equates to the percentage of the total property and how you look, because this is gonna be a little bit more because it has a building on it. That is just raw land and then separately would be the, the building and what that gets taxed at. So I think, I, I just don't know how much of the, what they're willing to give up as far as if we were to move town hall just a little bit down and stuff. So they, they probably haven't got into specifics yet, I'm sure, but I, have, but I mean, because we have to, along with the building, my understanding and Rohit, correct me if I'm wrong, is we have to have 28 parking spaces. Um, it's 26. Yes. Okay, 26 parking spaces will have to go along with whatever we decide to do, and that's going to take up a little bit more. I'll but get some answers because I think there's some exemptions there. So let me let me look into that question. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, I can, uh, Mr. Mayor. I can answer the no, question for that too, which is, uh, you know, we have a lot that's separate for this current village hall site, and uh, the simplest way would just to be a lot line revision to move that. Uh, lot boundary to wherever the new village hall is going, especially if we're going to be demolishing this one. He's, and so there's just going to be the same number of parcels. He's ta he's talking about its tax, not not necessarily lot lines. He, he's trying to oh. he's trying to isolate the tax valuation. And, right. and I, I, I don't want to get into subdividing this piece of property and stuff. Yeah, we wouldn't have to subdivide it because it's already two lots. We could just change the shape. Okay. All right. We good? All right, moving on. Uh, D, items of discussion. Discussion of Wax on Marvin Road street lights. Rohit? So I'll open this yeah. up actually real fast. We, we had a request. I think it was actually submitted to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, or, yeah. yeah, it was. Um, to implement some lights at a um, intersection for safety reasons. And w once we looked into it, we, we realized that only one corner of that um, that area was in our jurisdiction to even implement street lights. So I reached out back to the property owner or to the complainant and let him know the situation that he could talk with Waxhaw because a portion of it's in Waxhaw, a portion of it's in unincorporated Union County. Unincorporated Union County gets apparently requests like this all the time and they don't have a set policy for doing this so they basically said they're not interested. Um, Waxhaw said they would look into it. Here we are, the third party with just one little tiny corner of it. If y'all are interested in proceeding with it, and Rohit, you can interject or add to this. Um, we can do so, but this is not something that we budget, not something we have a policy for. So just moving forward, we know that if we get future requests, we need to be prepared for that as well. Which corner is it? Um, um, go ahead. If you look in the agenda packet, I have uh, a map with the intersections numbered that correspond to the email that, that's right before the map. Uh, at the top of the email, I'll have number one is Bonds Road, Church Road, and Waxhaw Marvin, two is Crane Road and Waxhaw Marvin, and three is uh, Henry Nesbitt and Waxhaw uh, Marvin. Yeah, and uh, you can it. see on the map, as you know, you can see where the yellow is in Marvin, the white is not. Uh, you can see how each of these intersections have, uh, you know, half, half or a quarter in Marvin, and the rest is in the county. So, uh, what Christina is saying is we could look into putting uh, street lights on the side of the road that is in Marvin. And which intersection was, was he specifically concerned about? Um, he actually, let's see, in the, I have the whole email thread, um, and he did list all three intersections um, on page, on the bottom of page two of that email in the blue oh, yeah, section, yeah. Yeah. he listed all of those three intersections. Rohit, do you remember the cost was like, I don't know, somewhere between 10 and $20 a month? I didn't, I don't think I was in that conversation, sorry. Yeah, I think that's, uh, let's just say 20 uh, and, and this gentleman lives in Waxhaw and not Marvin? That's right. He says, he also says that in the email. He's a resident of Waxhaw. Okay. And did Waxhaw get back to him? They did. They just said they would look into it. That's all. They're in between. Yeah. They're in. To be honest, though, they're in between managers right now, so I don't know how oh. how fast that process is gonna. Yeah. Also, in the email thread, it says you need to go contact Marvin because the areas of that are your concern are in Marvin. Who said that? Um. Let's see. Laura, Jean, Deputy Division Traffic Engineer said that. 
Well, that's with DOT. That he's, he's contacted DOT first. Oh, right, right. But then they said you need to go contact Marvin. Oh, because they're the, all in the town of Marvin, which they're not. Well, they're, they're not, not in Waxhaw, at least. They are in Marvin and the county. None of them are partially in Waxhaw. None uh, of the three that you mentioned. Gotcha. And so, and so unincorporated. So Union County basically said, we're not interested. Back. Yes. Okay. In a, in a nutshell, yes. Okay. I mean, I think, I mean, I think if it's in Mar, I mean, I think if they're in Marvin, if we can put up some safety stuff and, I mean, I, I've got, I mean, I've got no problem making stuff safer and it does get dark out here because there aren't. And what we can do, if y'all are interested in this, I mean, y'all can make a decision on this specific one, this specific request right now, and we can put it on the consent agenda for the next meeting. Or if you want us to look into policies and putting, you know, some funding in the budget and how we're going to make decisions based on that, um, those requests, we can do that as well. Is that, is this, would this be the same process as getting the lights up on the roundabouts? Um, no, because that's something that we initiated ourselves that we identified as a, as a safety concern. And this is coming in as a third party request. So, I mean, y'all could look at this and say, yes, you've identified it as a safety concern, but then moving forward when you get other requests. But I mean, would the process be the same? Oh, yeah, yeah. We contact yeah, yes. Union, yes. Union Cooperative yes. and yes. say, hey, we want to throw up some lights. And they're like, well, we'll think about it. And then it's a year later before we get anything put up. Well, so, keep, keep in mind that, some, you know, some of these requests, we're going to have to have a light study done because DOT is going to require some of these things. There's going to be a lot more costs that are indirect associated with just putting up simply a light um and that's where i would say that you know before we just jump ahead and i'm not trying to delay anything however i think it's probably prudent for us because then who comes next sends a letter and then if we have a policy in place and a process on how this yeah. gets done and then okay start with this determine where it's located deter and then i'm sure waxall has a policy Union County probably has a policy, do we? And if we don't, don't we need to have a policy first before we just go, you know, respond to this gentleman's legitimate concern and just say, okay, let's focus on that first. And then, you know, I, I'm more than happy to address any, to your point, Kim, any of your uh, um, safety concerns, or, or regardless of where it is. But if we don't have a policy in place, it's kind of like the same thing when we talked about the, uh, policy for WC, WAA, so. So what we can do in the meantime is we can reach out to some other municipalities and, you know, see what their policies look like and also get, you know, real hardcore costs associated with these light studies and things that would need to be done. Um, we can try to have it at the next work session. In the meantime, we can respond to the complainant and just let them know that we're still interested, we're looking into it in more detail and just trying to find out, you know, exactly how much it's going to cost to get this done, so. Yeah. And, and actually ask them because I think either way, we still move forward with the policy. Oh, yeah. Is there a problem with that? I mean, no. does anyone have a problem with that? Okay. I mean, I mean, more so because stuff like this gonna, is going to It's going to continue come to come up and, yep. you know, we'll see it with everything from street crossings to lights to whatever. Yep. I'm good with that. Everybody okay? Yep. Bob, you good? Bob, you good? good with that. Okay. That's fine with me. Okay. okay. So if somebody can just get back to the complaint and let them know that we're yep. right. still addressing the that? situation. Row ahead. Just get back with the complainant and let him know what we're doing to continue okay. to assess. Yeah, and either way, we're going to be putting a policy in place, but we are on board with addressing the safety issues um, of, of residents and non-residents for that matter. Um, but you know we just don't have a policy in place we'll, we'll, we'll start there and then actually you know move, probably move forward fairly quickly i would think with this particular concerns all right okay um next up we have discussion of law enforcement contract and additional officers so i'm going to pass out the, i don't know if y'all really need this i don't even know if you can see it to be honest with you because it's really hard to see so just for the the public we um and i know christine is going to present here you need this okay um is uh both kim and i and also christina sat in we did a phone call in 
given the circumstances, but uh, with uh, Sheriff Kathy, or uh, yeah, Sheriff Kathy, was that a week ago or so? Yeah. Um, on the phone and spent an hour on the phone with him addressing some of the uh, contract issues and concerns and stuff like that. So I just want to let the public know it was a sort of a, uh, it was an actual scheduled meeting, but uh, we, we were there by phone and addressed a couple of issues and I'll turn it over to uh, Christina. So um, pursuant to that meeting, I actually have incorporated the agreement that we have in your agenda packets to go through. I know, that, I know there was a desire to make some changes to the contract and just wanted to go over that in detail and, and see what parts of the contract needed to be renegotiated. Um, I know there was some questions and um, interest in doing a, like a one district area between different municipalities that could consist of Weddington, Marvin, and Wesley Chapel. So inside your agenda packets, I've included the calls for service that you can see um, kind of how they've been the last couple of years because one of the caveats that we're going to have to figure out is how many officers Weddington needs, how many officers, whatever jurisdiction we partner with, how many officers said jurisdictions need, and what percentage of that is reflective in the contract payment amount. So that's included in your agenda packet. Um, we've also line graph some of these charts so you can see the cost for service and how they've either increased or decreased or remained the same over the, the last several years. Uh, um, I will. Um, so, in our conversations with Sheriff Kathy, um, we had indicated that we were interested in possibly having some shared services between some neighboring municipalities, and he indicated that the other municipalities weren't interested, um, which the mayor and I had sat down and had conversations over a year ago with multiple municipalities about shared services and they were interested. Um, I reached out to one of the council members in Weddington to see if they were still interested in doing that and he said absolutely. Um, they said they are in the process of trying to return fire back to the county um, and that's their number one priority right now but that he is very interested in continuing the conversations. He thinks that it's um, financially feasible um, so that is something that he said he's kind of jammed up until the beginning of April and so that's that, since you we've talked to the sheriff Kathy you've reached back out to him okay. yes I did okay yes I did so um, the, the sheriff basically said there's no interest and he's probably hearing from the leaders the, the mayor of both Weddington and Weston Chapel and, and just is basically taking his direction that way where we're hearing different from the actual I don't know where he's getting his information from but I'm getting it from a council a current council member um, okay. in Weddington so so they're open to it they're open to it um, and think that it is a very good idea in, in fairness beneficial. I think the, the sheriff was open to it if we're I willing think, to I do think it he was fine with it I don't think he had a problem with doing it he just indicated that there was no interest um, would y'all like to have like a joint session with these other entities so we can hash everything out and I think we need to kind of do it like this first okay because I, I would rather them get their buy-in first than because if we if we had brought if, if we had brought all the you know a couple of municipalities together you know last year we would have gotten nothing would have happened so I would much rather get the buy-in up front and then sit down and then kind of hash out what the details and what it might look like and if it would actually work or not well I, I think we're actually I think this council is actually open to that and is we're willing not, to move yeah we are but yes. I don't know about others so my my point to that instead of having a meeting where they'd have to call a thing is is like we two individuals from our council reach out to maybe two individuals from other council and say at least here here's where we're at get it on your agenda for discussion where they can bring it up on the agenda and then talk this out i know wesley chapel talking to a council member there he's more concerned with what the actual contract look like looks like and what the cost is going to be because that to him is very unclear and there he's at the point where if it was just him making the decision it sounds like that they're considering just getting rid of their sheriff 
uh, officer altogether if the, if the price isn't right. And you know, but I'll, I'll let you continue as far as the, the meeting and stuff. But I no, think no. that's where we could. I think that's where we could go. And that's what I'm saying. I think we need to do a little sausage making before we yeah, come yeah. together as as full bodies before we. And um, and maybe you and since you have a contact with Weddington, either grab Jamie or Bob or myself, and we yeah. we can. We can make that happen without having a official yeah. meeting. And he's and he's gonna like I said, he's he's kind of jammed up until the beginning of April, and he's gonna reach back out. And he's also gonna said, talk to their finance and uh, finance director and administrator. Is this something that we are trying to do before the first of the year, the, as far as the the fiscal year? I mean, I, I don't think it'll happen. I mean, okay. I'd like for it to happen, but I don't think it's going okay. to. And I think we can continue. I mean, I think we're, it's going to be a process, so I okay. think we're going to be able to get it done in the next two months. But budget-wise, are we able to, say if we would move forward with it, would we be able to financially add in, say, September? We can't add a tax impact after Not that. a tax impact. An officer. Yes, we can still do that. And, and, and do that. There's enough money that we can. And, and then in following budget year, you add a full, you, what if we need to? Well, I think that if, I think we, I think we need to make a decision if we want to go ahead and add another officer, just us, before. But before I thought this part contract of. contract is done. Yeah, but because, I. Because either way, we're going to. I think we're going to need incur, an additional. We're going to, we're going to incur the cost. Either right, way. correct. So we, I think to, to Kim's point, we're going to incur the cost. It's just how big a bite of the apple we want to, we want to take. Right. And we should go, I mean, in my opinion, I think that we should have another deputy. Um, well, it was, it was in the survey. Yeah. Irregardless of, you know, what we think or, you know, how it shoots down, I think it's, I mean, Uh, can I grab something uh, regarding, uh, well, we've, we've all agreed that we would like to have uh, another officer. Uh, this is something that's been wanted by the community. Um, and and did we, didn't we budget for it? Didn't we budget for an extra person? We, did, we budgeted for full-time traffic control, so that would be off-duty officers. Instead okay. That you, leads me into now what I'm just gonna suggest. Contract says. Given <laughs> given now with this COVID nineteen situation, um, the officers that are directing traffic now are virtually not needed. Uh, there doesn't <laughs> seem to be any backup of tra traffic because there's nobody on the road. Uh, it all seems like now we're spending money. Again, we don't know how long this is going to last, but if it was there in place and was meant to be in place to handle traffic, especially the school being in, um, you know, now school is, uh, is extended out to, well, I, I'm going to guess it's May 15th, um, but I'm not sure uh, specifically. I, I know that Mecklenburg County Schools will May 15th. I don't know what Union County Schools will. Yes. My, my thought is that school is not going to uh, be in session for the rest of this semester. So what I'm getting at is, do we really need to have the officers now at that intersection, and can we use maybe the savings of that towards uh, what you were talking about here as far as budget for something for a full-time person later on? I mean, I yes, I think we can. I think that we don't just have the officers there for school times because we extended it through the summer because it still backs up in the summer. But I think right now everybody's working from home, which is why there is no backup. And so I think I think if we want to take off the schedule, Christina, for the next like few weeks until people until start, further let's just put till further until notice further and then we start then, seeing issues and then and then we'll give you the authority maybe to reinstate that without us having to come to a meeting yeah. to say, okay. They call it. We don't have to wait a but, month to. But yeah, Bob, well, I, I think you're right. I think I think that right now we don't because there has been no traffic, and I, I mean, there's been nobody backed up for the past probably week. Look at you, um, Bob, saving the village some money. I like that. So, but I, nice but stuff. as much as I would from like, home. yeah, from home, <laughs> as much as I would like to think that that savings would be able to cover an additional officer, it's. I mean, it's not going yeah. to. So I think we're. I think we're going to have to. Where does that come from right now? The fund. 
General fund. General fund. It comes from general fund right now. So, um, but it would just go back into there. But that's a great point. I think we just put that on hold. Can we make that motion now? Or we take that directive now. I think and we can just give you the direction to. Yeah, I can do that. We don't have to do a motion for that. Okay, so just put it on hold and let them know that until further notice. And, 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 we'll and, and again, Sheriff Kathy indicated that because it was so difficult for them to fill those uh, positions that they're going to maybe possibly start charging us more for those for those uh yeah officers. he he, he yeah. did he, he did suggest that he said that was his i think his one of his agenda items was he wanted to increase what we are paying for those officers on that corner um i right away responded in the meeting that we might consider reaching out to a construction firm which is was talked about before where they, on a daily basis, bring out construction cones and you have guys with stop signs, uh, basically construction workers at 15 bucks an hour on that corner directing traffic. Yes, you don't have the ability to pull someone over or do that, but you have well-lit corner that can be provided by a construction company. And we write an agreement with them and I don't see I think it's probably a little bit of negotiating with DOT because technically there's not really construction going on there, but it's a different way to, let's call it skin the cat, if you will. And um, so I kind of threw that back as far as an option. And I'd like to explore that as even going forward, because if they're just going to come in and say, we just need to raise prices, you know, we, we have to have other options. And I think that's a that's a valid option to actually at least pursue a, a large construction company we hire because we're going to do it daily anyways, regardless of school in, school out, um, and see if that's that's a possibility. Um, I certainly don't think it's going to be more than what the sheriff's departments are going to be asking. That's an option. And, and uh, Council Member Markley, just so you know, when we're talking about adding an additional officer, like in perpetuity, we have to f have the funding for that in perpetuity as well. So we can we can have savings now associated with these, you know, reduction in off duty, but we need to consider how much that's going to cost next year and how we're going to come up with that money. So roughly, we've discussed that it costs about one cent on the tax rate for an additional officer. So in the back of our minds, when we know we talk about additional officers, we roughly know we have to go up one cent. So just, just FYI. So I will uh, proceed with telling the off-duty officers to cease. And what will happen is that money will just be put back into fund balance at the end of the year. Um, and we'll continue to assess that on a staff level and re-implement that when we see the time. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, again, I think that if, if I'm looking at the contract for the Sheriff's Department, which I, which I am looking at it, we have agreed, the sheriff has agreed to station three deputy sheriffs within the municipal limits of the village of Marvin. Now, it does say that we've agreed to pay for those three, but our original contract with the county says three officers. And that's dated when? Uh, 2009. 2009. 16th day of September, 2009. Just, so, just for the yep. record, we just, for the record, in case someone will want to come back in and say, there's an updated contract, or you're missing the updated contract. We've got it. Yes. We're, we have a date on it. This, this is the contract that it automatically renews. But Kim, you were in high school then, right? 2009. No. Oh my God. <laughs> and I, I actually reached out to the county, and that's the latest copy that they have as well. So that's that's our latest copy. So so regard like so regardless, we are under. I mean, in 2009, they they thought that we needed three officers. And somehow that got lowered to one. Now, when did that happen? I have no idea. Um, but at the very least, I think we need to be adding an additional officer. And, and for you council members that weren't at the meeting and for the public, um, we discussed the need for having a say. Usually when you have a contract, parties come together and they both have an agreement together. This is basically directing where we have little say in what we get for our contracted dollars or what you know the contract that we have. So 
we we don't have much say. And one of the things that I questioned um, in the meeting was, and and I understand it, um, is that in if we have our let's say our full time officer happens to be on duty here and working. However, he is the closest officer to a incident that is going on, um, whatever it is, robbery in progress or whatever. And he has to be called away because he's the closest um, officer on duty. He actually gets pulled away. And how, how do we get sort of, in, if you will, I understand why they're doing it, but how do we get reimbursed and do we get reimbursed for that? Same thing that happens with the officers that we pay for on the corner that are, um, we pay them for three hours of work. However, if there's a call that goes out, they have to, they're required to respond to that. The, the key to that is in my conversation with another town who's thinking of actually getting rid of the sheriff's agreement and the sheriff's extra officers that they have because their point and our point too was it's sort of double dipping we pay union county that's required anyways to have an officer um you know and i think the sheriff pointed out that one of the when we formed our town one of the agreements was that we were supposed to have additional um, officers as part of that charter um, which we've been doing. However, if you have a town like Wesley Chapel who removes an office, all their officers and we add one, now think about this, and calls are going out and the, and, and the closest respondent happens to be from Marvin, we're actually you know, paying for more officers. However, we're going to find that they're going to be going over to Wesley Chapel or uh, other other towns because these towns haven't agreed to actually add. It it, it doesn't make any sense. So we got to clean up the language. Well, that was my point. Right, and that so that was I had in number two. So I got let me do two things. So yes, I agree with you. We need to be compensated for the time away from Marvin, but. Um, I, I would say that um, the sheriff didn't particularly care for the double dipping term um, as I used it, as you used it, because he said, well, you're still getting services from the county. And it looks like, and Christine, if I'm, if I'm reading this chart wrong, it looks like we get 76% of our calls are answered by other in 2019. Is that right? Um, and if that's the case, well, then he, you know, his point was, well, you guys said in your charter that you were going to have law enforcement. Well, if 76% of our calls are getting answered by other and not by Marvin, then I don't know why we're paying for one because we still get services. Yeah. The majority of the time it's being served by others. Yes. That yeah. number is accurate. Yes. You're right. So... Um, so, I thought that was Bob talking. <laughs> um, so, you know, my point is we either need to clean up this contract and get it to where it's more equitable for the village, or we, I mean, 76% of our calls are being answered by not Marvin. We just won't have somebody sitting here pulling cars and doing that. Now, you know, I, or we, we, we visit, um, 76% in those 76%, what times are those? What, what are the biggest time concerns that we have that are they're having crime going on within Marvin? We look at that and say, you know what? We, we, we don't want, because in the past, we've allowed the officer to kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of set his own schedule of 40 hours and he does it for what whatever it is. Steven's a little more amenable to changing we, up his schedule. And that's we fine, do, we, yeah. Stephen and I actually currently do look at the calls for service, what hours they are, and we overlay his schedule over the hours Perfect. for call for And call. that's, but, but, but it should say that in a contract that we're able to do that, not... Which it, which it doesn't. It, it says, doesn't. neither the village nor any of its employees or elected official have the, shall have the right to control, direct, or supervise the activities of the deputy sheriff assigned to the village for purposes of this agreement. What number is that, just so That's concerned. number four. Yeah. So, um, so under number two, the activities that's, that's about activities telling them what to do, but how about, how about 
specifically hours, working hours. That's, that's, that's not working hours. That's activities. We can't tell. I think what that's saying, Kim, is we can't tell an officer, hey, you need to go down to this corner right now and direct traffic because we're having an issue down there. Why can't we do that? Because we don't have the authority. To I do know, that. but we should. We should be able to have that. So th this still, this still irks me here because if we've got people run, I mean, speeding on Joe Carr, we ought to be able to say, "Hey, from this time to this time, can you go down to Joe Carr and sit there and pull people?" We ought to be able to. I mean, I'm not saying you need to go out and arrest somebody, but in terms of the stuff that we have the deputies in Marvin for, we ought to have some some level of direction that we can give them. Um, but I mean, but I still read this. I mean, supervise the activities. Like, I still think activities would include like what their schedule is. I didn't read anything in here about that, but. Well, it should be added specifically. So we're talking yeah. that we have more control on what hours we want. And if, yeah, I mean, if we can work it out with the sheriff, what, what issue do they have other than a scheduling issue with the sheriff's department? Because they got to get a car available for this individual, I assume. Well, we have our villa. I mean, he has. No, the, the car comes from the sheriff's department, which yeah, has to be checked out. Yeah, but it's Marvin. I mean, right. we have one. But, is that but what you're saying? No, right? I think what I'm saying is that that is not our car. Oh, no, that's not our car. That's the county's yeah, car. Yeah, and they just But put, it's Village of Marvin designated. Right. But on the outside of the car, it says... Oh, yeah, Union yeah, County. Union County. But my point is, <clears throat> if we're going to have control when we want him there... <clears throat> on their side they got to make sure a car is available and you know so that's where the <clears throat> excuse me the um the back and forth comes in is like you know, they may not have a limitless amount of cars and anytime we want an officer on duty they have a car available for them but don't you think that the one that has the village of marvin on there is just for the village no you don't okay it's the what steven's car he's the only one that drives it and it's just it's designated his house. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, I, I have to ask. This may be this may be off off topic. It's it's on the topic. But if back if we go back to two thousand nine, we have a two thousand nine contract <laughs> that stipulates three officers for the village marble. Did we or did we not budget in the annual budget monies for three? We did not. Mm -hmm. I mean, not since I've been here. Yeah. yeah. Not, not since I've it's been here. It's always been for one. So, it, yeah. I mean, this so is. So, Joe, you've been here since 13 and we've only had one, right? Yes. Yeah. We've only all budgeted for one every year. And that's an additional officer to what Union County in our 86 or whatever cents right. we pay. We have service available, but the sheriff's point in the meeting was well, when you chartered to become Marvin, you agreed to provide service. One of those services are um, patrol officers. Right. Now, in the agreement, it says three, and... I'd love to look back at the budget and see if we budgeted three at any point. Is there a way you can go way back to 2013? Uh, it would just... It, 2009. It, I, would be, no, I would be... Sorry. I guess maybe surprised, maybe not surprised, that if you signed a contract, every contract typically has a financial impact to it so if you have three all i'm saying is is if it had three did we budget for three if we have budget for three why aren't we did those funds get thrown back in discretionary or general or my guess is is it at some never, point or just never got it just never got budgeted for it i don't know okay i i that i have no idea but i thought it was shocking when i read this and, 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 and it says three. not only is there three but all Deputy sheriffs covered by this agreement shall work a full-time regular schedule within the village in accordance with the sheriff's standard work period. Meaning that you have three full-time officers that you would assume would be staggered. That you wouldn't want two officers at the same time, right? You could probably in this village have one officer for 40 hours. And what did they say? He said that to do true full-time coverage, five. five officers would be required. Yeah. Meaning covering 24 hours for seven days a week, you'd need five officers to do that. Here they're saying back in 2009, they're providing the sheriff agrees to station three sheriffs within the municipal limits of the village of Marvin. All sheriffs shall 
covered shall work a full-time regular schedule within the village accordance with the sheriff's standard work period and, um and, but, and, and just 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 for the public we didn't get that just so the public would would, would also assume because someone's out there would be thinking well why don't we just have our own police force whatever law enforcement here to cover it. what we're also not saying that either is we would have to incur the cost of training cars the list goes dispatch on, on. everything dispatch, everything goes on and on so i want to kind of squelch that yeah. as you know as opposed to someone well, let's just do this well just because i have friends that run you know he's, he's the captain of a small town and they have their own law enforcement there's a lot there's a lot of oh, yeah. law that. well it's that's where talk out. was from other towns to incorporate and say hey let's have our own weddington wesley chapel ourselves maybe mineral springs form a separate and actually you know the yeah. funding site so gets like redirected a yeah a co-op that you know and how many officers would that take and stuff and then would we be paying for um you know there's more let's let's face it the retail areas the people that uh, wesley chapel is going to get more calls to go to target and stuff like that to address shoplifting and stuff so we we get into that situation and we're sharing an officer we're not getting necessarily the coverage because we don't have the actual um our walmart concerns. our walmart is not gonna uh yeah well no but i mean the the sheriff did say that we are going to have more calls once the policy is done yeah so that will basically take over the time of our additional yeah. officer yeah. Yeah. um do you see it christina yeah, I'm actually looking in the budgets from 2009. Now I'm at 2011. I'm sorry, 2012. And there was actually a double, double the amount. Which I, saw, was, I, I just saw that 220 there. Yeah, which would give me the illusion that we had at some point two. budgeted for two. Um, or, or maybe back then they weren't as expensive, so it was like maybe seventy thousand each or sixty-five each. And so we carried that. And then the question would be, did we carry that cost forward? And, well, we've been carrying it forward since 2012. I'm trying to find out where where that stopped. It's just the, the money we have budgeted didn't didn't uh, get us as many officers. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, that's it. Price, it got more expensive. They're highly so. trained. Yeah. We, have, we have 007s now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the, so we're the three agreements it's still their agreement to have it and it's like you know but, okay, but so it, that has been happening no but it also says on the neck on page three at the top that we will pay for three so we need to we need to this this contract absolutely needs to be updated but going back to adding changes as christina's continuing to look for that i think at number two and to joe's point about when our officer is full-time on like and gets pulled away we need to have some sort of reimbursement credit something to the village um okay something happened in this and show. only if we happen to have an officer on duty and he gets called away so i'm Correct. sure that has to be documented he's on sure. duty he gets called away and it's like for a significant amount of time if it's like half an hour like i get it but if it's for like I don't think there's anything like an officer day. does that's going to half an hour. It because they got to file reports and yeah. stuff like that. That it does take a lot of time. So, and and just for the record, um, I have spoken with the off-duty um, supervisor Jay Scholler, and he assures me that if they are called off for any reason on off-duty, this is just for off-duty. This is not the contract that he does reimburse that internally. Perfect. Now, now not with. The contract itself, like the regular contracted officer, but this is like the guys on yes. the corner directing traffic. Yes. This is not so. Our so he, when you say reimburses, we pay them because I, I remember I used to write checks and sign checks for those individual like officers. Yeah, it's not necessarily a reimbursement. It's, it's like just like if, if they if they get called off for an hour, he only charges for two. He he figures that out internally. It happens so far and few between that he's able to to hear that to do it. So just um. You what she said. No, sorry. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, got, I I realized my phone was on and I I had to shut it off. I know, which, but this is one thing that you always talk about, so I want to make sure you hear it. Okay. If they're gone for an hour 
on the corner. Right. And normally we get charged for three. If they're gone for one, they, we only get charged for two. Right. So it's not like we get reimbursed. He just doesn't charge us for the okay. time that they're gone. I just remember writing checks, and it's always been for the full amount. I never remember writing checks for... For the officers I write checks for, it's for the always for the full amount. So I never see a credit. Uh, you know, when I when I was responsible for writing, signing yeah. the second person signing the check, yeah. it was to those officers. I don't ever remember seeing any any when you look at the bill or whatever. If you compare it it the writing like the check two, to the it bill, it may be like two times that they've worked, and so okay. like you know, that's fine as long as it's being addressed. I don't think they get get through to the accounting portion because that's going to be more work on them. It's just like if I work ten hours today, I might work you know six tomorrow because I'm <clears> taking those two different out. Okay. So it's just something I think they do internally. But as you as you guys were sitting here talking, I was looking through um, the budget ordinances over the last several years starting with 2009 and if you look here at the screen you'll see public safety was at 209 so i bet in 09 like stuff was probably 765 70,000 so that would be 3 well come to 2013 right. 14 it bumps down to 70 if you do 70 times 3 that's right at the 200 and so i think at one point we did have 3 or we were paying for 3 <laughs> Um, I don't know what happened. I would have to go back and look I at bet you, minutes. I bet you Nick would know. I'll give him a call. Okay. He'd probably remember. Well, and Chris, Christine's the one that actually, Chris is the one that, Robertson is the one that signed this contract as our finance director. So she may right. have some insight into it too. Yep. So this, this, what we're looking at right here is the 13-14 budget. And if you'll notice down here in public safety, it's 70, you see that number? 77 yep. for deputy? So that, that was the cost of one officer in that year, and you you have to configure that it was going to be a little bit less in previous years. So that's that should have been three officers. And I could see past council looking at this town and saying, we don't have any crime. Why do we have three officers? I, I know that, I mean, um, oh, who, was our, who was our deputy? Um, Ed. Ed. When, I know when Ed was here <clears throat> and he first met some previous council members, he was like, why do we even need a deputy? Why do we even need one? So I am sure that that was the year that they knocked it down from three to one. We can go back and look at the minutes and see if we can find anything out and if you can reach out to Nick. Um, yeah. I mean, I would just like to know because in our contract, it absolutely says three. And that we would pay for three. And that we would pay for three. So. Yeah. So it, let's get to the point and say we need to demand uh, with the sheriff's department going forward a new contract because this is this written is, for 2009 oh yeah we're 11 years later and we we just need to clean it up yeah well but going back to the original conversation should we not be also simultaneously working with wesley chapel and Wedding? absolutely yeah but, but we need to update this because this automatically renews 90 days prior to the end of the contract correct it, it's just that we're at a 90-day clause right now, so it, any party can terminate at 90 days. Oh, 90 days. Yeah. And, and I think the balance or where we come to some sort of agreement, that I think we all agree that we can add, we should add one more, and maybe the tax increases warrants that, and, and that pays for that. Plus, if we initially had three back in 2009, that extra part-time person is shared. So we actually have two and a half or two and a third or whatever it is, so we're budgeting for definitely, I think we need to budget or consensus on that. We need to budget for another full time, put that into the budget um, and then move forward with our conversations. Yeah. And if it, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, we still have another officer, but. And we're still moving forward. With and and I, I think, I, I think we can weather in a general fund and correct me if I'm wrong. I think we can weather in a general fund, say if, we finally get this to happen in September or October that we are now a part time. We can probably pull that sit from a safety from general fund until we get to the next year's budget. And then we we add that for a half. Not, yes, not for yes, a yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Let me so. make sure I'm understanding correctly just so I can proceed. Is there a consensus that we want to add one additional officer at the beginning of this fiscal year and have an associated tax increase for that officer to to offset the, the total cost. Is that the consensus? I, that would be my, yes. that would be my. I'll say that out loud, yes. yes. Bob? I would agree. 
Okay, and, so and, and I would too, which basically it's through the survey we got that and, and people clearly said that they would accept a tax increase for that. So okay. just so you know, so that, that, that gets reported as a 25% increase in taxes, which goes from five cents to into the news. six cents into the news. And for those who want to uh, um, just, but, but it was clearly uh, said that they, everybody, and the fact that we are, we actually some, somehow in 2009 we went from three to one and uh 2013 um, is when it dropped down to one 2013 okay yeah, yeah. So, per, per the per, per the budget lines yeah, yeah. we will uh, adjust the budget accordingly and if you know the roughly again it's one cent it could be a little slightly less than one cent could be a little slightly more than one cent so we will make that tax increase reflective of whatever that proportion it is with that agreement um, second question, or not really question, but comment that I would have is the, the, the thought process behind this collaborative district, per se, is that we basically have a cost-sharing program that makes the lesser impact to our taxpaying citizens with this, the way we're going to work it out. So it could potentially mean that we get three officers for the same price we're getting two. Um, so there may not necessarily be an increase associated with the new um, the new way y'all are thinking of doing if, this contract. If we can work it out. If you can work it out. With the other municipalities. And not if, this contract with correct. the county. Yes. Okay. And if, if there is an increase, let's say it's $20,000 increase for having a third officer. I don't know what it is going to be, but we would just take that out of fund balance. And then over the next fiscal year, we would figure out just how we were going to pay for that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, so in this contract, I would like to work in somewhere that says if our full-time deputies are gone for a significant amount of time that we are credited for that time. I, I wouldn't even use the language of significant well, amount of time. Like just that. yeah, just if they're gone that. at all, because any any call that they have to make, and you could probably confirm this through your friend, is there's a report that goes along with that and stuff. And that just driving over there and the report is going to be two to three hours. Period. Anything, anytime they're called away, that has to be accounted for. And then I think, so that's one place that I would like to see some added language and then I would also like to see where we can direct them in terms of where our where we feel our highest needs are that they can that we can direct them to pay a little bit more attention there and that we can work out their schedules. I had a general note on uh, number bullet point number four on page two to authorize have authorization for activities based on community needs. There you go. Something like that. Community yeah. needs and, and hours or something like that. So we'll get that addressed. And in the meantime... Those, those and and if the sheriff come back and says, no, we are not interested in changing the contract, what are our options? Well, do y'all want me to negotiate this before you talk with these other two? Because I, I think the premise is the other two, we come on board and say, this is what we want. All three of us want this yeah. in our contract. So I think... We should probably wait until y'all talk with Weddington and Waxhaw or um, Wesley Chapel. We all come to the table with the same agreement. This is what we want. Oh, you don't think we should change, try to change the contract now? I, I would. I would like to see if they're open to changing the contract and the, stuff. I mean, I county? think yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. I mean, okay. okay, we'll go ahead and do that. And then. did the oh, sheriff oh. say he has control of that, or is that the county? The county. Well, the county has the pricing control. He has the language control. I think. Because it's his department. Degree. Yeah. Just yeah. Right. So <laughs> only because I don't want to wait for Weddington, Wesley Chapel, Mineral, whoever, whoever okay. it is. And do we get We're Chapel involved? We're using them because they're next door. We have not at this point in time. We so do we get Chapel involved in this contract? Because I'm, I'm in this one. Absolutely. I mean, the he's going to act in our be he's going to act in our best interest. Yeah. I mean, you can run a buy for you. I would think so that you know he looks at the existing one and then the new one that we have. If he makes any recommendations, yeah. I think it makes sense that we have somebody from a legal standpoint. Sure, because I'm sure nobody's reviewed it in a while. Covering yeah. our and our financial policy says that he reviews all contracts anyway, so we'll we'll okay. get him to okay. do it before it's executed. But but again, because and I keep using those municipalities that are physically closest to us, whoever we want to talk to about this, um, shared services. But I don't know that, that we're going to get them on board. I hope we do. I, I mean, I think that's and something to strive for, but we need to take care of our own contract in the meantime. And yes, and it's two different things, I think, because I think this shared services, if this comes to fruition, 
that it's a separate contract anyway. Yeah. So and it's it, similar it, 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 in yeah, ways, right. but it's a you're separate right. contract. But it, but it may be only a contract among the municipalities. We may, we may say, we'll keep our two, you keep your three, and we'll work it out amongst ourselves. Yeah, from an accounting standpoint, I, I could see them, the sheriff's department, billing one yeah. Yeah. municipality, and then that municipality charges the other one, and we, we yeah. you know, work it out that way. Okay. Jamie, Bob, you guys good with that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Now, do you need a, a motion to send uh, the officer that we have now for traffic? Until further notice. No, we just we can we're all in agreement um, to direct Christina to do that, so we're good. Okay. She's gonna let him know, and then we're gonna give. We probably should make a motion to give her authority to reinstate it when it's time to that that say work work normal sort of the new normal is back, and we have school and traffic, and we did already agree to have it for year round. Instead of having it go to a meeting, all of a sudden we start seeing contract with a simple phone call could be like, hey, we're starting to see a lot of backups. Christina could easily. Do we need a motion for that? I, I think we're good. We'll just you need as a consent that we give it to Christina okay. for that authority. Yeah. I don't okay, it. that's fine. Bob, you good with that? I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Um, moving forward, uh, discussion of additional council seats slash referendum. This was a carryover from the last agenda. Uh, I think we just need to carry it over okay. again. Do y'all want me to add it to the next work session or regular? Yeah, which okay. will be May. Okay. And I think that's fine. Only because I think we need to get through next meeting before we start talking about what okay. we're doing here. So we're okay. moving that. We're going to table that and move it to May work session? Yeah, because we won't have a work session in April. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I didn't see anything in my package regarding that particular agenda item, and I thought, uh, okay. So, okay, so okay. All right. Next up, we have review of council meeting minutes for 2-11-20 and 2-27-20. Okay. I, only th I think I only had like one or maybe two changes, but the first one, Christina, is under B. Yep. Number three, mm -hmm. Deputy E. Got it. Is it? Oh, it's O N. It's O N. Barbie, I'm going ahead and saving the changes in your. Which file. one are they on? 211. Which one on number three? Which one? B3. But I've got it changed. You don't need to do anything. I've got it. Okay. That was it for 211. Okay. Bob, do you have anything for 211? Any changes? I do not. And I didn't have any for 227. I'm sorry, do you have any for 211? Nope. I don't have anything. Okay, Mr. Mayor? I do not. I'm looking at adjournment. Okay, so that was 227. Let me see if my, I didn't, I didn't have anything note, note, noteworthy that that's, I'm, I guess we can move that to the consent agenda. Yep. So we need a motion to um, place the amended minutes from 211 and 227 to the April 7th consent agenda. So moved. Yeah. Okay. Just one. I just realized I saw the very. Uh, it's the verbiage we have. Not that it's a big deal, but it's Marvin Ridge Color Guard one first place for cadets and for high school. So there's two different cadets and high school. Two okay. two different first places. That's the only thing. Oh, okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Barbie. Understand. That's okay. Sorry, all right. I didn't understand that. Okay, That's all right. Go back up. Right. Okay. Stop. Good. Council comments? No. Right there. Right. First place. For, for, for cadets, cadets and for high school. For in, and instead of place in cadets. Yeah, I got it. For cadets and for high school. So there's two separate teams there so okay. I got it no place for okay. cadets four tag on it I can't tell you <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do that isn't it Christina okay okay great thank All you right. so now I'll make a motion to move the amended minutes for 211 2020 and 227 2020 to the April 7th 2020 uh, consent agenda. Further, just all those in favor? Aye. 
right. Motion passes. Give me a chance to do my job. Okay. Um, discussion. Next up, we have discussion of contract renewal with Kinetic, formerly Windstream, for upgrading the All Works. So uh, before Barbie phone comes, system comes into play on this, I'll just let you know that there's really not not a whole lot of cost associated with this increase. It's dramatically needed because we have a lot of issues internally. However, it is a three-year contract, so I did want her to present it to you all to make sure you were okay with the three-year contract. I'm fine with it. Any other comments, Barbie, that you would have? No, actually, what, um, what, what I put in the memo pretty much um, explains what the contract is. There is a $73 increase per month for the new, and what they're doing is, is they're, we've already got fiber installed into the village, and so what they're going to do is move um, the phones and our internet from the switch box connection and the cables over to the fiber. And in order for them to do that, we were trying to utilize that function without having to go into a contract, but we can't do it. So um, our only option is to go into a three year contract um, in order to utilize the um, 100 MB uh, fiber to get us off of the uh, 3 MB tier one. So Barbie, what Barbie, what happens when we move? What happens when we move is we'll have a faster internet, and um, our phone systems will work uh, much uh, more efficiently than what they do. No, now. what happens when we move buildings? In terms of the contract, the three. Oh, in contract. terms of the contract, the contract will move with the building. I've already talked with the um, with the sales guy and gave him the. The heads up on the the possible move and he said that all of that would they would come out and move everything over um to the new building perfect is there going to be a cost associated with moving all the stuff to the new building he assured me that they were not going to um, charge us for anything because um we've been a long term co customer but we've also gotten bad service with them okay so and we've expressed that so okay so we're to, so regardless of where we pick, they'll move it regardless with no cost. Yes. Okay. And the only thing I would say is if somehow when we look at that new contract, if we can see where that says that, because yeah. we're saying that now, but then come through two years from now when we're moving in or a year from now. And it's a different sales guy. And yeah. Just make sure we look at that part of the contract and get Jacqueline to fully um, review I, it. Yes. And um, what, what, what we have done for this particular, and I can get him to do it uh, with, um, with, with moving is he has given us through an email um, language that um, Frieza waives any um, other fees that, that is associated with this contract and I can um, negotiate him to uh, to do it for when we move to the new building. Great. We're so we're ready. adding another $900 a year to this particular We'll play. find it somewhere in the budget. We'll find it. Okay. Yeah, let's just make sure it's in the contract because I don't want to be hit with like a, you know, $5,000 fee for moving and everything or whatever it is. Not fee, but, you know, cost to, you know, run new whatever and all that stuff. Okay. Okay. I'm good with it. We'll put it on the consent agenda, Barbie. Okay. The contract when we get it. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, no. Barbie. Thank you, Barbie. Next up, we have discussion of street signage replacements planned for fiscal year 2020, 2021. So a couple months ago, we went through our spec manual and y'all saw the new signage that had the nice logo at the end of our street blades, our street sign blades. Um, and what we've done since is we've kind of estimated how much it would cost to go ahead and make all those street blade replacements for all the, the roads that we have in, in our jurisdiction now, in our in our purview, that are not DOT roads. So there's a nice little table that's inside your packet that shows you the total cost. And in the meantime, I've reached out to some of the HOAs to see if they were interested in helping us to, um, to pay for some of these signs, um, only with the premise of knowing that we have not budgeted any funds for it. So if we can get some help from some of the HOAs, it would be able to, we would be able to implement more of those replacements sure, faster. Yeah. I did get a call from an HOA yesterday that um, um, apparently had read the memo and 
kind of assumed that there was some pushback for some from some HOAs that we've now changed from ask. I've never asked for a hundred percent. I've asked for a, a, some proportionate level of um, participation and trying to figure out how to do it equitably. Um, if Firethorn has twenty five signs and um, Marvin Creek has three, you know, how do we differentiate between doing Marvin Creek versus Firethorn? So my premise was if Firethorn's willing to contribute fifty percent, then we would implement that neighborhood first, whereas if Marvin Creek was interested in zero, we would not do them. So I don't really know how y'all want to do it in terms of priority. My only thought was if we can get some input from HOAs, we would do those first. So what did the person say? I, told, I assured them that there was no pushback. It was just we were trying to figure out a way to prioritize those. Oh, so they were interested. They thought yes. it was terrible that there was pushback possibly from other HOAs. They were just wondering why. And I said, so there, there's no push, there's been no pushback so whatsoever. They, so they're on board with 50%. Yeah, yes. Perfect. Which, which neighborhood was that? Um, I think it was Providence, Providence Road, I think. Awesome. Or maybe it was Oak Brook. I can't remember. I have to look back at my emails. Okay. okay. But I have not heard back from, from all the HOAs. Um, do all of these neighbors have HOAs? Bob, do you guys have an HOA? They do not. No. Repeat that again. Do you guys have a homeowners association? No. Okay, can you can you gather up 22, 26 from all your neighbors for your street sign? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have one sign, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to John Jones. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the only question I have is I, I think we have approved what the sign is going to look like, correct? It's in your spec name, Did correct? DOT, and I remember when we, remember, Jamie, we had original signs that we changed at, at Firethorn. Um, there was a cap on the top of each post that was for more of um the uh, emergency response yep. for uh, is that required in this because at the top of the post forget about the sign we're not replacing the post i assume we're just replacing the signs the blade. yep but on top wasn't there a requirement of a certain yes. road number you had to have a number as opposed to a name and is it still there? It's the block, the block numbers. numbers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, that is a requirement. Okay. So, yeah. because, but, but not, not the block numbers on the sign. I'm talking on the top of the post. There is a designated, is like a 15-302, whatever number or small number it was on the top of that post. What is that's that? A, that's State Road. Does it say SR12? That's our phone system. Oh, I'm like, what is... Okay, okay. sorry. It, it's probably the State Road. It is a State Road. So that, yes. that's a, if it's a DOT road, all DOT roads have a number. So the SR means State Road, and that number is associated with their State Road. And so as we're converting, then, just to be clear, from a State Road to a Marvin Road, we're not requiring that because no. that's not in our road. No. The block system. numbers are different. That's the block number that's Understand that your part. Block. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to be on the sign, but I'm, it's a state road number that we had but, to. But we can put our logo on Marvin Newtown as long as we have those numbers on there too, correct? That's something that we'll have to work out with DOT. And I don't, I don't, I have not got to that point yet because if you notice in this chart, DOT is pretty expensive. It's yeah. $6,500. Yeah. So that was going to be my last, okay. my last one to do. Okay. Um, but I, I think the answer is yes, but I don't know for sure. Okay. I would say for this, we reach out to all the HOAs, find out who is interested in cost sharing, and those are the neighborhoods we do first. And, and that was what I was thinking. Well, we don't do them until we the roads get done. These well, are the roads in our system. system. Oh, I know, but, uh, uh, okay, they're in our system. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, Firethorn hasn't been accepted yet, but right. But if they're willing to pay, like, they're willing to pony up, then these are the ones that we've paved and are in our system. Yes, and we'll have to, we'll have to figure out a way to do this, like, moving forward, because, uh, for instance... Telemore is not in here. I'm sorry, Telemore is. Um, Preserve's not in there yet. Innisbrook is not in there. Yeah, but you haven't done Innisbrook exactly. yet. Exactly. At some point, we'll still have to do that, so we'll still have to come back and figure out. So we'll, we'll have to continually continually do this. Yeah. This is just kind of where we draw the line in the sand Why right now. Why is Preserve not on here yet? Because they're still in their building, and they haven't turned them over to Correct. yet? Correct, yes. Right. Same with Innisbrook. But do you've yeah, reached we'll out. You're to saying you've right. talked to every one of these? HOAs? No, she's not. She's reached out. She's yeah, I've talked to mostly all of them. Oh, okay. you have? Most, mostly every single one. And people are it, waiting for their meetings to... Um, most of them have been receptive to providing input, and I actually initially just told them the initial estimated cost of total. 
Um, but I figured at some point people are going to say, no, we're not interested. So I had to figure out a way to prioritize who we're going to do first. I'd say if you want to pony up all, we'll do you first. Choose how to get things done. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. You good with that? And we're going to put this in next year's budget, just so y'all know. So it right. won't be done until next year. Next, it's first July 1st. Yeah. All right. I don't see much. Nice job on July that. So. All right. Um... Next up, we have discussion on NCDOT supplemental agreement for a third roundabout. Did we agree to this? You did. So what you are did. we doing? I'm just letting y'all know. And oh. just to make it cleaner, um, if y'all could just motion to approve the agreement. Y'all have already done it in a meeting before, but you ne didn't actually see the agreement in your hands. I just mean, we have to do it. or Otherwise, it's going to get kicked to the back of the line, correct? Yes. Okay. And so. I've put all the documentation in there that shows you the numbers. So, just, so do you need a motion to, oh, because Joe's got to sign up in 30 days, doesn't he? Yes. And, yeah. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the NCBOT supplemental agreement for the third roundabout as presented. Further discussion? All in, no. fa in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, so Joe, you can get that signed and Christina, you can get that back to her. Yes. Whoever. And we're still waiting for our check back, too, by the way. So hopefully we'll get that soon. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Keep looking for it. All right. Next up, we have discussion of website committee proposed appointments. Barbie? You there, Barbie? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. If you'll see on the, the uh, memo that I've provided, I have been able to uh, get four committee members. And uh, the committee is proposed appointments is based on in compliance with Rule 41 of your uh, Rules of Procedure for appointments. Um, so now I just need you all to uh, approve the, the members. Um, I have um, I have applications from Bob Minenkamp and uh, the I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name Joy Dip. And we do have one from Christina, but I don't have one from Leanne Block. Um, I just have an interest from her. Okay, and Barbie, so, just just to note, I'm not sure what our conflict of interest policy states in terms of subcommittees, but just make sure they get that st statement of economic interest in before if if our policy states that they have to have that. I'm I'm not sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it, oh most definitely. The, the committee has it. We haven't even set a date for that. Okay. Um, we're just in the early stages of getting the committee approved. So once once you're good with the list, then I'll go ahead and send those um, documents to each person. I'm fine. If you're fine. I'm good. You're gonna be running. Okay. That, so. uh, do we need a motion for that? You're just gonna put it on the consent, or what? Because you, you you didn't ask for the. Um, you just asked for discussion. Can you just put it on the consent for next meeting? I can put it on the consent, okay. and um, at that time, we'll go ahead and um, uh, start the um, the ball rolling for the the um, conflict of interest stuff. Okay. Thanks, Barbie. You're welcome. Give me one second here. I'm just making some notes. Okay. Um, thank you for that. All right, next up we have a uh, uh, discussion of voluntary annexation plan. Rohit? All right, um, so this is mostly a discussion for you guys because, you know, after a lot of looking, it doesn't appear to, we don't appear to have a, an actual like plan or procedure to get the areas that we intended maybe back in the early 2000s to have within Marvin. We don't actually have a plan or procedure. And uh, now it's a little more difficult because uh, the state requires uh, voluntary annexation, which means that the government, the municipalities, can't just go around and select this old neighborhood or anything to say, okay, this is in Marvin now, like they used to do back um, maybe over 10 years ago. So um, this item is just for, you know, a discussion of what is the intent for annexing, you know, whole neighborhoods and, and little donut holes in uh, the Marvin, like, uh, impact area? Um, in the uh, agenda packet, there's a map 
this may be just the start of the discussion, but we have an annexation agreement with the neighboring municipalities that we would not annex uh, outside of this red line. Um, but it is it is a pretty big area, and uh, a lot of it is not in Marvin right now. So, uh, for example, Ladera, which just got built, I got called from their HOA saying, hey, we would like to join Marvin. And, you know, I had to tell them that would be great, but you have to get every individual homeowner to agree to it. And then the HOA uh, was like, hmm, that sounds hard. And then I haven't heard from them since. Well, so, well can't we help them do that? We absolutely could. And that's part of this. How is the part of this discussion today? Um, I thought we could take them by block. I mean, they can... They, it's voluntary, but we can do it. Is there continuous? Like you could take a maybe a grouping of six or eight homes on that street that turns into Ladera, for instance. And um, if they all agree, and they're all contin, con, is the word contiguous? Yeah. Um, then they they basically volunteer to become a part of Marvin. So you could potentially have the tricky thing comes in, and where you tell them is going forward if we're going to take over their streets if they don't have a gate and we're going to take over the streets the tricky thing comes in is if when it's time to get their streets done because we offer that as a service and that would come under our um it would have would have the situation like we had at weddington chase where um, there are some outliers there that we weren't we, we we would have to have the hoa act and say okay I guess they put sort of like a lien on their house, or is that what they did? With how, how is the HOA handling that? Are they just paying for it um, for the home? Just billing. They're billing the proportion of the street frontage to the homeowner. But you could do independently. An yeah, okay. you could do an assessment too, though. An assessment where the HOA could do an assessment, not us. No, we could. We could. Okay. Okay. So let me ask a question because I, I feel like this is two totally separate. Subjects. I feel like what is in our agenda packet is a contract between the municipalities that we won't step on each other's toes. And then we're talking about bringing in individual neighborhoods. So, well, are what's we in the agenda is, is just a foundation to say this is what we have so far. And it's all, all it's saying is that we are interested in eventually annexing most if not all of the area within this red boundary but that is the limits of what we can annex so how do we get to that point i think we don't just, really have a plan he's just showing you kind of where where our open areas are so if you look at the the map any areas that you see in white that don't reach the red line are kind of areas of discussion does that make sense so help me out like with this. like right here if you look at the map like this area right here would be open for discussion. This area right here would be open for discussion. These areas. And, and this this is a map that was, this is an agreement that was made in uh, the early 2000s. So we've since annexed neighborhoods like Providence. But this is Marvin. Sedgefield. Mm -hmm. Right, right. The, the green is Marvin. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. no it's not. No. This is not Marvin though too. in here. Between here and here, this is not Marvin. That's, that's no, uh, I think, um, Hunter Oaks. No, you're right. You're right. So Hunter Oaks is not Marvin, but that's included in that red border line. Right, right. That was a, at a time we, uh, well, Marvin had thought oh, uh, we, we would annex see. that area at some point. Okay. I, I still don't understand why we have this contract with Wesley Chapel and Weddington in the past. Um, it's just so that, you know, in perpetuity, if we're interested or they're interested in annexing anything, this is kind of our limits of what we would ever annex. Okay, so have we entered into this contract in the past? Because there's a date on the last page before all the signatures. It says 1999. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't find the uh, the actual executed contract by the time of this, uh, this put in the meeting. But we have this contract. It is it is a contract that we follow. You, you can't see the Marvin yellow area. If you look at that map up there, you can kind of tell. But I think he was trying to show you like there's certain areas in here that are yellow. For some reason, Rohit, you can't see the yellow in the agenda packet so we oh, don't we don't yeah, we don't really know where the, we don't know where the uh, areas of discussion are Does yeah um so i guess you just have to look at there is another map in the agenda packet back in the uh the uh, street light discussion i put a map of the current marvin limits so you could probably look at those where's this map, map at okay. but is but is this an executed contract yes. that we have 
Yes. yes, yes. This is a contract that we already have. I just couldn't find the actual. Oh, so you're not version. asking us to go to enter into a new contract? No, again. no, no, no. We're not. We already Jeez, have this contract, and it's like 20 years old. So Gosh, this is a contract yeah. we already have. It's kind of like. Is that similar to one we have with Mecklenburg that we yeah. have yes, a tenure yes, agreement? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's, it's just the with the other country. towns. Okay, I was very because that was that was okay. I think but, he's, we're just trying to isolate the areas in which y'all are interested in, in talking to first, and what we can do at that point is try to put yeah. together a package to say, hey, this is why we, this is why we okay, invite you to see, be a part okay. of it. Okay. See, I thought we were trying to figure out if we wanted to go to Wesley Chapel in Wellington and have that. Con okay, that's no, no, we we executed this contract I think over twenty years ago. Thank so this you. is this okay. is already established. All right. This is already established, and now we. Yeah. Uh, the discussion came up that, you know, we've been sitting on little pockets of areas that we really should have within Marvin. How do we get to the point where we actually do annex areas within our, uh, you know. Okay, I got it. Okay. Interest. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. I um, mean, for me, like, I think you just kind of start from, like, wherever our borders are and just kind of, like, you know, like, scoot your, I mean, clearly... Providence down south, Providence Downs, Kingsmead. I mean, I'd love to have a Hunter Oaks in. I mean, I know they came to us at one point. And <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I, I know it was because the median house, like, price of the house wasn't very high and their stuff wasn't something. We can work on kind of a, a package and, and, you know, put something nice together to invite, to send out to all the property owners and invite them to be a part of us and if y'all want us to start working on that and i you know. absolutely think that's okay. a great idea and i feel like um john barisich may have some information because i feel like park trek and greenway were trying to put together some sort of pamphlet okay. about like some of the pros Benefits. coming into marvin so he may be a really good person to reach out to because he is a i mean he's got more notebooks I, I yeah I, I actually wrote started a letter and wrote a letter I'll have to dig that up and see what because I was trying to put exactly that a letter to these and and I would initially like to focus eight, on eight to ten pages no but it's long <laughs> no but it's 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 more and I can condense it down to a bullet point but that was more of my argument of why you would want to be Marvin. But it comes down to what kind of services are we going to provide. I think our first steps, before we go outside our borders, is closing up the donut holes and focus on, the, on those areas, such as Ladera, which is right in the heart, such as Providence Town, which is right in the heart. But as we, if you look at this map, like it's, I mean, if you go and you're kind of going along this border... It's, I mean, this whole, I mean, it's all this in here. Well, that, that's, that, the that's the unincorporated area, and the chimneys are involved in that because that would be considered kind of a donut hole. But, yeah, but um, all this in here for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all of it where it, it makes sense if you're driving on a road where there's a definite, you know, okay, we're out of Marvin now. And but stuff I mean, and like, like Providence Downs. There's three streets in Providence Downs are in Marvin, and the rest is not. Like, that's insane. Well, the reason why is because in the middle of the building, no, I know, I know. it became, you yeah, know, they, they the, the, the developer said, oh, if we don't have to pay that tax, then we're out of it. That's what happened in Weddington Chase. So that's one of the, uh, the, uh, the fallouts of uh, the state legislator incorporating that. But I, I think we... Instead of expanding, because if you look at it right now, that would be expanding if we go into Hunter Oaks, whereas our existing border is. But if you go within our town limits right now and how it looks, and if you were to look at some streets that would create that barrier, there are clearly donut oh, yeah. holes well, that I think we focus on first. Well, I mean, so this what, whole what, area is a donut hole. What we can do at, at a staff level is come up with you know a nice little yes. package, and then yes. we can identify parcels to implement first. We can bring it back at the next work session, make sure y'all are okay with it, and then we'll send it out to those property owners. I mean, I think it's great, and I think Rosen. I think if they're like, "Ooh, that sounds like a lot of work," let them know that we're here to help facilitate that. We can mm -hmm. come. To, we can come to a meeting. We can talk to individual homeowners for them, like whatever they want. Sure. So I guess if uh, we're kind of closing up this discussion, I just want to recap, you know, we're taking what I've heard are really good ideas. You know, we start from 
where we have the donut holes. I'm hearing, you know, chimneys, Providence down south. You know, like, I guess we will start with areas that are kind of between Lizera, us and our Gates of Ainsley, so it's like, Reserve. Right, so we can close that gap between, let's say, our park and the current yeah. boundaries and then start expanding outward. So we have, like, a schedule of where we want to start. And then we also create uh, the one of the first things that Mr. Mayor said was, uh, you know, what services do we offer? So create kind of, a, you know, an advertisement type package where uh, we can convince, you know, hey, we have trails, we have the park, we uh, resurface roads. You know, this is why you should be in Marvin. And, and then and we start um, we start yeah. block by block because that would make it a little easier to digest than uh, neighborhood by neighborhood, but still have like a schedule of um, how we want to address and to your point about the, the, you know, including the park and stuff, we have a situation where right across the street from the park is a huge development that uh -huh. is unincorporated. You kind of can't, don't know the name off Oldenburg. the top of my head. What is it? Oldenburg. Yeah, that's it. Oldenburg, yes. I mean, that, that would be a prime candidate to, you know, closing up the donut hole because they're, by, by all means, they're they're going to find a way and they're going to probably want to create a safe, safe passageway to get over to that park because that right. that makes sense for them to use it and it's uh it's right there and uh um but you know yes i agree with everything you're saying can i and I, all right i just want to ask one question real fast um i had this discussion with um derek the other day is the cancel amenable to potentially revising our uh, fees associated with parking passes and barn rentals to out of jurisdiction residents substantially increase that amount to influence people to come into the town to have a discounted rate for those. Uh, we we haven't we haven't revised our rates since 2014, if I can remember correctly, and I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, there's you know i was just trying to think of ways to entice people to come in and if you know if we can have an exclusive venue for people to have events and that sort of thing where in-town residents get a better rate than out-of-town residents and they do now but it's just it's not it's not a substantial difference well i think that we got to be careful there because obviously you know the rates are what they are and i don't know if we haven't that's not on the agenda but it, it is part of becoming what you get for that and i think if um we i think look i think looking at it, at some point that's going to be a discussion of how we uh, or as we continue what rates residents get what rates i think that's what we we don't entice them with that i think we we say hey right now if you wanted to use our park here's your rate if you're in this donut hole this is your rate and 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 that has to be a significant difference so there's an yeah. advantage to it because i think they look at that as if they're going to become part of marvin and pay five cents on their property tax oh i just if i'm going to have an event over there it's a lot less expensive for me to just pay that fee rather than pay an ongoing you know right i mean you, you just you, you want that to be clear so i don't know if we get into that quite yet okay but i think we we could put on a future agendas review. I think we do that every year anyways, review uh, or every other year. You might, but they haven't been changed in quite some time. I, I think it's been at least six the years. Fees? Uh, the Barbie, fees? Barbie, can you correct me? I think the fees have been changed. Um, I'm trying to find the fee schedule online. Uh, Barbie, are you there? The fees have been updated uh, most recently. Where, where's the fee schedule at in the V Drive? Uh, it should be under office, um, under general. I got office. it. Okay, I got it. 2018. And then fee schedule. So it, the last time it was done in October the 10th, uh, 2018. Uh, however, I'm not really sure that the park fees um, were changed significantly. Um, but we do address that every other year or every year. When things come up, we look at the amount of income we've uh, gotten from weddings, the, the little whatever we, we're doing over there. We've, we've made adjustments, but I don't, I think there's a cer certain amount of, uh, you know, if you're part of Marvin, you get this. If you're a Boy Scout troop, uh, you got it. Right. 
uh, but technically you Sorry. should address your fee schedule um, each time you do the budget yeah. um, so that uh, we can look so, at so funding that that you put in the uh, potential budget uh, reflects what type of fee schedule that you have we'll look at this um, at the ne at the next work session too yeah I just think it should be significant amount that you know if you're going to use that you know because I think by default that neighborhood right across the street from the park it makes sense because our park's in the middle of where it's very difficult to access at all from most people that live in Marvin they have to drive there well but, and, and also like if you take into consideration a five hundred thousand dollar assessed property is roughly two hundred and fifty dollars so you know if you bump and I'm just hypothetically saying this number here this non Marvin number if you bump it up a hundred bucks if, if somebody has one event per year it pays for itself to be in Marvin right so if that individual homeowner correct yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm just just trying to try well, to think it, of it's other advantages and it goes back to can we provide a um, and, and we really seriously have to look at this because if we're taking over roads is having that one uh, sure. garbage company that's going to service yeah. that neighborhood and we're not you know um, we're, we're not opposed to multiple contracts but as long as those multiple contracts are designated for because there may not be one company that can handle all of Marvin but that one contract um, you, you're not getting multiple trucks on the roads we're, right. we're limiting it to one time that truck comes through the neighborhood per week for garbage pickup and stuff but that's those are all the things that we need to kind of put in place and for staff I will um, I will look into that I know I wrote that letter was about four or five years ago that was one of my big things of why I couldn't understand how Marvin was what it was but it became a kind of a reason why you would want to be Marvin that was way back then I think there's a lot more benefits now so um, but I'll, I'll try and dig up that letter for you guys as a starting point I think we have the direction we need to proceed yep. on our end okay all right um we good there everyone i'm good good yeah i'm good next up is uh discussion village center re district renderings okay so the idea behind this is that um the planning board has come to a point where we have about maybe a 50 percent 75 percent design on the zoning district for the village center. They're still going to take a few months and I think will be delayed a bit. But um, uh, at this point, I think we have enough of the foundational uh, zoning elements to create a, uh, a set of renderings that will be helpful in showing uh, the public and the property owners and you also, the council and mayor, how this uh, village center would look. So in this item, I've included some, you know, samples of rendering that I think uh, the, you know, what I'm looking for in this type of contract. And here I'm getting your, um, I'm asking for your permission to uh, get a contract, uh, which would be uh, under my uh, planning and consulting budget, which I have. Um, comfortable amount of money in um, that uh, I could get someone to make some of these renderings based on the uh, current uh, zoning district idea. And just for the record, this is totally in my purview to approve and accept. I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the board with moving forward with expending some public dollars on design work or just conceptual. Yep before we moved any further on that so if y'all are good yeah and and, and I'm, I'm very interested as we go forward and before you know i surely hope you don't think this is what marvin's going to look like but um <laughs> with the picture i'm teasing but um i'm anxious to hear the nc main street conference update and and what you learn and how you know that part of the process gets involved is that at the very beginning and and who we're who we're talking to, to to present that but I'm all in favor of because a lot of people look at pictures and that tells the story better than what we can maybe use in words here and stuff and absolutely and you know. I will be giving that update in the planners report at the end of this meeting okay and yeah, the budget you can do that go ahead 
And it's a fifteen hundred dollar budget. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred. Oh, I thought I saw. Right. Okay. I have two thousand dollars left in the consultant budget, and uh, I don't really anticipate that being close to that for the rest of the fiscal year. So. Okay. Three hundred dollars to be able to keep that comfortably in that budget. Yep. You guys, okay with that? Yep. Yeah, first skipper. Bob. Yeah, I'm good with that. I don't know how you found something so inexpensive. Christina kids Christina's kids are gonna be doing the rendering for that. It's gonna be their yeah. project while they're not in class. <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. That was supposed to be funny, Christina. She's not listening either. <laughs> we just we just busted her right now. <laughs> She's like, yeah, sure, that sounds good. <laughs> We, we won't hold order kids to that, so um, maybe my kids. So. Jason can do it. There you go. Um, we're good there, so we move forward. Yeah. All right, next up, discussion of rules of procedure. Rule number 14, change to add open topics. Oh, to, oh, to add open topics. Yes. It's just the, the rules of procedure. Um, Sounds good. Put change. it on the consent agenda. She only put that one page in there just so y'all have it, but yep. that's what y'all had asked for. Stick so. it on the consent agenda. We're yeah, but th there has to be the rules that we approve, so we'll approve that. Yeah, and and I apologize. Um, so it can't be on the consent agenda. Didn't, didn't we don't see it. We don't have it. Yeah, I yeah you will. On the next meeting. Had to be done first before we added it to that. Okay. She's so gonna, I apologize if, if, if I uh, didn't add that. Um, to the agenda. I'm just saying I don't see the rules in the packet here for us to look at and, and discuss. That's what I would it's think. Just change. It's just changed. Okay. It's just changed. Okay. Just to say open topic. It's just Fine. order of business. Yeah, okay. yeah you, did, you did it right, Barbie. Barbie, yeah. Okay. You're good, Barbie. Yeah. Good not. You're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure that there's, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and as you said, you wanted it on both the regular meeting yes. and the work session. So yes. you can see that on both sides. And, and, and the other thing I would say is I would encourage us to not have that, but things happen. Like we are living day to day right now, and we just got a, a perfect example. We just got a notice that Charlotte's on lockdown, essentially, and, and that's going to change things. So I would encourage council not to use that, but if there's nothing, there's nothing, but and, and try and get it on the agenda from a transparency uh, standpoint, but you know, I mean, it just, it's going to happen. So, okay. Um, thank you for that, Barbie. Then moving Are forward, a discussion of 20, so go, I'm sorry. Did y'all do anything with this? No, we're going to add it on the consent for April 7th. Okay. And next up we have uh, number 12 discussion of fiscal year 2021 retreat report. And I don't know if y'all's packet had, I'm, I'm noticing in my packet, the back pages were not included. I don't know. I don't know how many pages there should be. Okay. It's not included in yours. Now, can I ask y'all to table this item? Yeah. Yep. You can. It doesn't mean we're Table to the next uh, May, <laughs> to the, to the. May work session. May work session. Or we can do April regular. It doesn't matter. Whatever y'all want to do. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'd like to like to go like talk about it. Cause I, cause okay. I mean, I, I would like to. I think our mission, vision, all that stuff was a little long-winded, so I would like to make sure we've updated it to what we talked about at the retreat, and then okay. we can give it to Barbie and her website committee, and they can update it. So you it want to do that in a work session? Yeah. So that'll, we'll table this and make a mo motion to table this to uh, the May um, work session. So moved. All's in favor? Aye. Bob. Bob, you good? <laughs> Press mute. Unmute. Hello. Bob, are you good? My pajamas got Into caught over my, my microphone. <laughs> I'm here. There you go. <laughs> we we volunteered we you for a couple of committees, Bob. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can hear you. Okay, you're good. You're good with. Uh... I'm good. Okay. All right. All right. Um, next up on 13, we have acceptance of February 2020 Treasury report. That's good. And I did want to note there's a memorandum in there about the bank fees that we had discussions oh, of. I missed that. Basically, in short, we've asked them, and we're just waiting to hear back. Majority of the fees were what we had what we had mentioned in the. Um, oh, like the credit card. Yeah. yeah. 
But like so, still like monthly fee for my fifth third, which I'm gonna be paying. That's crazy. The balance we have. But there's a memo in there that explains it. Okay. Great. Cool. Everything looks good. Y'all can approve it. Okay. Um, so we're waiting on that. So nothing other to report. No. Okay. All right. Next up, we have uh, change location to Fellowship Hall f on April seventh, twenty meeting uh, to amend yeah, the calendar. Just, yeah, we just need to amend the calendar. I'd like to make a motion to amend the uh, Village of Marvin meeting calendar for the April seventh, twenty twenty budget work session and regular meeting to Fellowship Hall. Uh, budget meeting starting at 5 30, regular meeting starting at 6 30. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you. Next up, we have rules of procedure discussion. Um, so, what is this? You haven't even looked at I have not. So you don't know what's good. This is just a defined rule. So, we have a policy in place now for electronic participation or um, teleconference participation. We don't actually have rules in place, rules of procedure in place for how... We don't have a rule? Mm -hmm. No. As far as like how the, how the voting works, um, the, the policy is very vague and generic in terms of we allow it, but it doesn't specify exactly to the extent of what the details. Okay, so now this one says quorum, present, in person, or electronically shall be included. Our policy does not say that. Our policy says... You cannot, if you're on the phone, you will not be cons counted as quorum. This right here says in person or electronically. But it's, it's. I think well, it's... It, before, it, before you can um, participate remotely, you ha there has to be a quorum presently in person. That's by statute. But Kim's saying... Okay, but in this rule of procedure, what I'm looking at right now, it contradicts that. I understand yeah. what you're saying, but what this says contradicts that. Right, but we still have to follow the North Carolina general statutes regardless on what, what our practices are in our rules of procedure. However, for a CRTPO meeting, for instance, they, given the circumstances we're facing yeah, right now. Um, Barbie, what's that state statute that says that? Sorry, Joe. That's all right. Um, I can pull it real fast, Barbie. Hold on. I got it right here if I can... I mean, here's one that's 143-318.12. But that's 143-318.13 is the state statute. So, and, and the state statute trumps anything that we would have on our um, rules of procedure. Um, where does it say that? So, and, our, and the attorney at the time that drafted the electronic procedure uh, was Melanie, so... Um, we, we just basically need to amend our it is. I would imagine what statute requires us to do yeah. let, me, let me if, if the council is okay with me talking with Chaplain about this further and making sure we're, we're in compliance with everything that we're because I think be. the whole idea of this was for the ability for those who have announced ahead of time whether it be because they're on vacation or whatever or the six hour window that we put in here that they need to um, call in that there's an advance notice that they have the right. I think that was the whole intent is for them to have that right, but there had to be proper notification, whether it was at the beginning of the year announcing that they're gonna be on vacation, but they'll be able to call in, or they happen to be sick or two hours away, whatever that is. I think we, and Christine, to your point, if you talk to Chaplin, that we also address the issues of um, circumstances that we're facing we are, like we are right now. I know for CRTPO, they were having trouble getting enough people to show up to those the meeting for a regular meeting, but then they used something in the North Carolina statute or within their own rules and bylaws that allowed them to reach quorum without them being present. Um, so if they can do that in a subcommittee or a committee like CRTPO, I, I would like to look into, can we do that with the village given, I mean, we don't want to encourage us not showing up at meetings. I mean, and, and specifically being out of town, we want to be here, but in those unique circumstances that 
a sickness but still can call in and listen or if it's uh you know happen to be on vacation but still want to be able to vote i think that was what the intent was given what we ran into a couple of years ago when you know council changed a an agenda added things to the agenda and stuff and there was no ability to get a vote i'll work on that barbie with with chaplain i would just be careful because someone could take complete advantage of it and say no i called in i was present right I, I, you, I just caution. We, we have to have written. I, I, I like, understand. I understand. I, I'm just gonna. I'm just throwing up. Yeah. Careful work because for every for every good step, there's there's. Something yeah, there's a way to. It's a, it's a, you're gonna crack the door for something to go. Oh. Right. So okay. that's just my only point. I think you have, I think the, the the piece in here that says that you know that you you know you must have a quorum of four. Mm -hmm. Or it has to be written. I mean, there's, it has to be a really an extenuating circumstance. Yeah. And to your point about having a quorum, having us be there, I think that probably is we start there. But then being able to vote and be able to call in, I think that that I mean, there, there was a reason we did that, and it and it's like. You know, I see your point, though. I think I we need to be able to establish quorum in the office, in person, has to be established before you can have a meeting. From the from a federal standpoint, from a federal government standpoint, they can't if you're not there in person. But they're doing that today. They're going to do a think vote on that. Under normal circumstances, it under, also uh, this is a dire emergency. Right, right. Blah blah blah. In, and because they have. You know, they're, they're with the pandemic. Right. So, so you're basis. okay. You're okay. So let me get this straight. You're okay with let's uh, having a meeting if um, we reach a quorum. Like in this situation, correct me if I'm wrong, but we could not, given this right now as it stands, you two being here, Robert Epps being absent again, and Bob on the phone his vote wouldn't count but you guys you couldn't do anything financially because it's just you two unless we change that rule about the mayor being able to vote so there's a bunch of different things we, we've got to look at here well I, from what i understand from our from this we bob can vote and it would count right now he can't establish quorum so if jamie wasn't right. here i wasn't here, right you weren't here he can't establish quorum but I think these are so vague in anything that we decided to do, he could vote on being on the phone, except for quasi-judicial, closed sessions, and other confidential stuff. I don't know. Uh, can, I, can I interject a little bit? No. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on, uh, Barbie. Go ahead, Bob. Bob, go ahead. Well, I, I, I was going to say, from everything that I was reading, from chaplain and then he sent in a separate email. Um, you know, it, it seems like when an emergency is declared, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty straightforward. It was, it was a tornado, it was whatever it was be, and we still had a meeting, and I was caught hold up in a shed somewhere or at a hotel, and I had no ability to get to the facility, uh, you know, whatever the village hall. All of this, I think, what you're saying, Joe, you you Bob already but an email's gone out and said, Are you gonna be there for the meeting? You know, and I respond and I say, Yes, I'm going to be present. I think it's all good. Um, I think that when it comes to financials, you know, stuff like that is real important. I would think that that's where the demarcation would be. I mean, don't you think? I mean from from what, what you're saying, Jamie? Number two. I, I don't know. That's what we're trying. To, that's what we're trying to figure out, Bob. Uh, yeah, if you read number two, yeah, I saw that for the national, the federal. I mean, we've all, yeah. even Marvin has has declared a state of emergency. So um, then the electronic rules will apply, but I don't like number five because it contradicts the quorum situation. So we need to make sure yeah. that that is that is taken care of, and we need to make sure that. 
that well, we that we look at seven, which is voting and discussion, that anything on quasi-judicial matters, whoever is on the phone electronically will not be allowed to vote. I, but, but also, kind of the chicken and the egg, we're also having a discussion about the mayor. Which is changing the charter, which is an ordinance, which two people can't do either. Mm -hmm. So those are the types of things that... So it obviously needs to be, I think, having Chaplin here and, and yeah. moving this to that and, and maybe a chance for Christina to talk with him to clean that up again and him to answer questions and us get this really pinned down as far as what establishes quorum and how we go forward if whether it's extenuating circumstances or a person has at the beginning of the year, for instance, has said, I'm going to be on vacation this time, but I want to participate in this meeting. Um, does he have a right to vote? And can we give him that right to vote? Um, it just obviously needs to be cleaned up a little bit because there's confusion um, on this. And, and again, we don't know how long this is going to go. And, you know, Bob, we may ne go the next four meetings with you and if we can't make financial decisions, that means we can't get a budget if you're not sitting in here. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think the, I think the premise is this policy only applies to the conditions that are set forth in number two, which basically is in that declaration of emergency. Yeah, so all other choose. policies would, would apply in, in normal circumstances, not when we're under a state of emergency. But let me, let me talk with Chaplin um, about number five, number seven, and number two and make sure we're all on the same page. And he will be at the next meeting, so we can just, he'll be here. I can clean those things up with him, and he'll be here to answer questions. Okay. okay. Are we okay with that? Because it yep. sounds like it's, we could be here hours yeah, okay for that. that. Okay. Um, we may have to have you come in in a hazmat suit and then uh, to physically be here to approve the rule changes so we can continue us. We'll see. <laughs> That's for you, Bob. <laughs> I, I, I got you. All right. Okay. So um, anyway, the moving on is uh, administrator's report. Administrator's report. I'm sorry, I was getting mixed up here on the thing. So uh, reports and updates. First up, uh, E one administrator's report. So I have a couple of things. I was meaning to pass this out a couple of weeks ago, but. Uh, Forgotten. This may, things may have changed since now, but this is a annual league conference that they do in May. I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but just want to let y'all know in case there may be some interest. We will continue to assess if they're going to have that in the next couple of weeks. I'm sure. Uh, second thing is I'm passing this around. This is a Marvin uh, Leash Law frequently asked facts. We've actually put it on our website for any of those that are interested at home listening, um, just so y'all have. So, so, so I'm getting a lot of questions on that. Who do they call? Um, yeah, I don't want to get in a situation where we're calling Derek. If they have an issue right there, that they're calling Derek. Derek has to go investigate and stuff like that. I, I would think, or I, help me with that question. Who do they call? And, 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 you know, I suggested, I mean, this actually was spurred from our neighborhood because right. the resident was not taking any action and other residents were concerned that and they used it, they literally have been apparently saying that there's no leash law and that's why they continued doing what they were doing. Now that there is, I strongly suggested a letter from the HOA be sent to them, notifying them that there is a leash law now in effect. But the questions coming back to me is, what do we do if we have an incident? And I said, well, documentation is key, but that starts with calling who, the sheriff or the can you, can you add to that? Because one of the questions that I've gotten is um, if it's a aggressive dog, who, who they need to call. And that's animal control, correct? Correct. Okay. Not just like a loose dog, but like some a dog that's being aggressive. Right. That is one that, that's a question that I have um, okay. gotten. Yeah, and I, I think the intent is, and I know there are people that walk their dogs with the dog not on the leash, so they're going to be required going forward to yeah. have that dog on yeah. the leash. Yeah, and, and that's my, so I've got, there's a guy that likes to let his dogs run around in the field that's directly behind my house and drives my dogs absolutely insane, which in turn 
drives me bonkers. So I can I can inform this person. I don't know who it is, but I can inform them that there's a leash law and that they are required to have It's a on dog his dog property dog. he's doing no, it? No, it's in the field right behind my house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that, a, that it's was... an HOA common property common, right, common yeah. areas. No, it's not no 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 not their yard. I don't okay. think doing your own yard. We can definitely do that. Barbie, I'm looking on the website to yard. navigate them where to to um look at the law and, and it says lease law instead of leash law. So if you can just change that, that'd be great. Um, but if anyone goes to our website and Googles leash law, once she gets this fixed, it should be go here and type in, I'm just going to type in lease law now because that's what it says, but it should pop it up okay. under village services. Okay. And um, if we can add the thing about an aggressive dog, I got Barbie. I'll, I'll get that Barbie. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. But to answer your question, uh, Mr. Mayor, is the, that who they would call is a non-emergency dispatch number or the, the sheriff's office. And the non-emergency, we there. have that It's on the leash. It's, it's, it's on that sheet. It's on the FAQ. Okay, okay. I just was hoping we had it. We could just announce it. On yeah, we do. Right Read it. You have it right there. You can call them non, non emergency. Two, that's 704 289 1591 for those who are listening in for the uh, taped version of this versus or that. you can call the Union County Sheriff's Office 704 283 3789. Yep. Okay. Those are the two numbers that we recommend they call but okay as long as we have it on the lease. In fact I'll put that in my own phone so I'll be able to answer that question for them and pull that up imme immediately. So um thank you. And I do have one more thing to report, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um let's see earlier this month the village uh, had a settlement agreement and release with a couple of parties and I just wanted to announce the settlement proceedings on that. It's case number 17 CVS 02431. Uh, the settlement agreement was entered between Ken Orndorff as the plaintiff, the village of Marvin and Maria Scoot as um, individual capacities and um, the collective parties. Let's see. Both defendants denied respective allegations and the claims of the action and deny liability on this matter. Both parties desire to amicably compromise and to settle the actions. The defendant, Maria Scoot, by and through the Interlocal Risk Financing Fund of North Carolina agrees to pay the plaintiff, Ken Orndorff, the sum of $14,500 in full and final settlement of the action. Defendant Village of Marvin through the Interlocal Risk Financing Fund of North Carolina agrees to pay the plaintiff a sum of $3,000 in full and final settlement of the action. Again, that was case number 17 CVS 02431. And I'm just reporting that settlement agreement and release. And just to be clear, that settlement was not paid from village of marvin funds it was under the insurance that, that is correct we had so uh, again no parties denying any um all parties were denying well all parties were denying any guilt but that was a settlement after this has been on over two three years now that it's been going on and moved to a federal court i believe it was and it was separated um and my understanding was they, our insurance company decided to separate it, one against the village and one uh, representing the village only and one representing Miss Scoot. Correct. Yes. And um, that's where we ended up in the end of this, so. Um, <clears throat> and I have nothing further to report. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing, because we don't have roads on here. I'm sorry. Um, I do, do we have roads? No. Okay. Uh, I did hear back from AMT yesterday, and we are good to go with everything we need from uh, DOT as far as the pedestrian refuge on Joker. Um, so he is putting together some estimates right now for that for the cost, and we're also getting the encroachment agreement together um, to submit to DOT. So we should have some information back to you all to proceed with that in the next couple of meetings. Uh, and has DOT gotten their study done yet? I, I don't know if they have, but as Mike and I have talked, we, we, we aren't just going to wait and sit around. I mean, we're going to go ahead and, and take take it and, and run with it. If we have to pay for it, then we just have to pay for it. And I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, maybe we can do some cost sharing, but if we can't get the roundabout done, I have a you know, feeling that we're not going to 
So we'll, we'll have some more information uh, a little bit later next month on that. Okay. Hopefully. All right, good deal. Thank you. And the only thing, just to go back <clears throat> on that law, uh, attorney agreement that the insurance paid for it, two separate cases were filed. Our deductible was $1,000 per case. Is that correct? Um, I believe that's what it was. Just a, you know, So out-of-pocket oh, cost for the village yes, was $1,000 to defend ourselves from the insurance. They, they separated it, which created two separate I, I think cases. Right. And I think our, you know, and I, get, I just want to make the record straight that that's what the outgoing cost was not the, the total amount. Insurance covered it, but it was two separate cases. I'd have to look at the deductible for that, that type. <clears throat> I believe it was $1,000, so. But you can correct me if I'm wrong down the room, but if you want to look into that, so. Okay, anything else? That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> okay, next up uh, under reports and updates, planner's report, Rohit, anxious to hear your experience with Mr. Jones at the NC Main Street Conference update. Absolutely, and I have been eagerly anticipating telling you guys the report of what happened as well. Um, so we attended this conference it was two weeks ago, and uh, as I said, hey, hold can on, you talk a little bit louder because this is as high as my phone okay. gets. And Bob, can you hear Rohit? Yes, is that okay? No, he, uh, I can't hear uh, Rohit. He's not real clear. Okay. Okay, we're going to move the phones closer to each other. So, Rohit, if you could speak a little louder and we move the phones closer. I just want to make sure. The phones have to be six feet apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'll try to project. And also, my mic is right in front of my mouth. How's that? That's good. That sounds good. Okay. I can hear you. Awesome. Okay. So, as I said at the last council meeting, we got our money's worth in the first five minutes because we met uh, the Main Street Rural Planning uh, Coordinator for our area. Um, we actually had a meeting with him um, on Tuesday, and uh, he told us some very interesting things that um, also we didn't really expect, but also um, are going to be really good for uh, you know strategic planning going forward. Uh, one is that he doesn't recommend us that we actually join the Main Street program but we still can implement a lot of the things that they do in that program, like the, like the four pillars of how to develop a downtown. Um, one, so in the report, um, basically I've, I've gone uh, a little more in depth than I think I will in this uh, verbal report. Hang on um, one second, we, right ahead, if you don't mind. I just want yeah. to interject and say the reason that he doesn't want us to join now is because not, not because of the village or anything. It's just because they don't typically have folks join that don't have a district already defined. So that's the only reason. Oh, right, right. Okay. So we can, we can join, <laughs> right, we can join the Main Street program once we've developed something uh, that resembles a downtown, but he said more, mostly that program is for pe uh, downtowns that are revitalizing an existing downtown as opposed to creating one from right. scratch. Regardless, we still have access to all of the resources that the program um, participants would have, including the state departments that help the towns. And uh, in the report, I've also listed a few of them. We have the Department of Commerce, which uh, which does Main Street programming and uh, rural planning. Um, we would be still uh, communicating with this uh, the gentleman Jeff Emery a lot in terms of you know what the state can help us do and and the knowledge that they have from helping you know dozens of other towns do what we are doing so that's a that's an astounding resource you know that we got we also have uh the state historic preservation office which is going to also be a great resource because of the thing that the main idea we have that we're going to be rehabilitating all the existing buildings and they like that a lot so they're going to be offering tax credits for the developers to do that um, in the tune of 35 to 45 percent depending on their eligibility so that, that 35 to 45% is the cost of repurposing their building. The state and the federal uh, offices of historic preservation will be offering that uh, cost. Uh, so it will be a little more uh, easier for the property owners to uh, follow through with the vision that we share. Um, as well, um, I'm just blown away by the amount of uh, impact that a simple rebranding can have. And, uh, the branding and wayfinding people are saying, you know, if you just give something a name that, that stands out, people will pour public support into that idea. And so um, I put in my report also 
we consider going forward calling it the Marvin Heritage District because uh, the Village Center District is a name that's been associated with a project that's been on the shelf for over a decade and uh, with a new name that can really spur some some excitement and with that excitement comes private investment and that's, that's the big thing that makes something like this happen. Um, so I've also talked about a municipal service district in my report and I've, you know, since uh, realized that, you know, since Jeff Emery was talking to us, he said that service district, which is a taxing district, should be considered as one of the, the, the last foundational, like organizational things. So in my report, I said we should do that first, but really um, we should do that after the zoning district is established and we've rezoned the properties. So that would be not uh, this upcoming fiscal year, but the one after that, the 21-22 fiscal year. Um, that will give us a lot of time to determine the boundaries and also the tax rate and also uh, have that economic analysis that I have budgeted within the general fund uh, to see you know, how much we should be uh, taking out a loan on and how much uh, like uh, the time period that loan should be. And um, that's, uh, that's effectively what I have in, also included in that planner's report is a, uh, a timeline of both the general timeline of how to develop a downtown and also the process of establishing a municipal service district. It's actually pretty simple. Give a report and then we notify the property owners and then we adopt it at two consecutive meetings and uh, on, the, on the last page of my report I have the statute that shows how we're given the authority and the exact details on how to establish it um, but I just want to say in addition to that that a lot of the property owners are on board and if we tell them this idea that you know we'll be establishing a special taxing district and then we will be paying for the utilities and the infrastructure that's required for your property to be able to develop, they should be, you know, sold on that idea. Um, Plus, there's zoning changes too, right? Yeah. So there's two there's two components of the uh, district. There's the zoning, and there's the taxing district. So the zoning district is going to be a rezoning of these properties to say once we develop the zoning district in the planning board we will rezone those properties in the council and then those properties will be allowed to develop as per the zoning regulations that we develop. And then the second part of it is the taxing district, which is kind of separate, but it will pretty much be the same boundary, which is these properties have a interest in developing additional infrastructure than the rest of the town, uh, which is uh, obvious. So that's why we need to tax these properties a little bit more. And the going uh, range is between 14 and 21 cents, which is what I heard at the uh, conference. Um, so I'm currently thinking 20 cents. But of course, since we're going to be doing it the following fiscal year, not the upcoming one, we'll have some time to figure that out. So say that back again, the 20 cents. What is that? The 20 cents would be, an, a, it's, it's an estimated value right now, but it would be an additional special tax that will be levied on just these properties that are in the downtown district. It's an overlay district, so you would basically define, let's just say this entire corridor from uh, Marvin School to Joker, just conceptually, all the parcels that are on this corridor would have an overlay 20 cent tax increase district. But what if they did yeah. nothing with their land? Then he's, he's discussing trying to have a deferred program where if you're just completely completely residential and you want to stay that way and you don't want to develop it, then you're deferred in some way, shape, or form. We're still looking into that, but that's that's kind of what the talking points would and be. And could we see for some property owners that have significant amount of land in this corridor, could we see them potentially subdividing the frontage portions where they have access to the property in the back, but then, uh, you know, one of the things that I heard, or one of the concerns I heard is how do you um, when you do this corridor, if it touches property that have large parcels that have horses, for instance, how do you create a barrier mm -hmm. between the, those frontage properties that would be part of the heritage district right. or whatever? So that's part of the, can, yeah, the consultant that he's planning on hiring next year to come up with these rules 
an ordinance. Mm, that, right. That can be addressed in the zoning regulation. Currently, we have it that, you know, you have a parent track. Commercial can only be located within 300 feet of a major road. Okay. So when you have a property like Scott Letts, whose property goes, you know, 26 acres back all the way back to Meadowlark, he's he, by the zoning district regulation. He can only have commercial in the front, even though his property goes back. And right. they're also looking at a transitional density of residential in the back. So even yes. the furthest back properties would only have a rural type of uh, density. And then once you start to go towards the front, then you can have an, uh, a little a more suburban type density. And then in the very front, you can have commercial. That stuff can be regulated by the zoning district. And the, the only thing in looking at your report, the only thing I would caution us is this, um, where the 35 to 45% of the rehab from the federal office of it would, would get a rehab cost or reimbursed or whatever, however you look at it. Once you get, my understanding is once you go historical district, that throws a whole new, especially if you do this whole corridor historic, it throws a whole new level of requirements um, on us. And we, we've got to be careful if that's the direction we want to go and calling it heritage district versus a historical district. I mean, that so that 35 to 45% may not, we may not qualify for if we choose not to go down the historical district route. Right. Because of, we, we would have to have this area designated as a historical district. Of course, not all the properties would uh, be eligible only probably the Crane House, the churches, maybe Scott Letts House. So a few properties would be eligible, but it would be on the uh, burden of the developer or the property owner to make sure that they comply with the historic uh, preservation, not us. But uh, what, what the mayor is saying is there's other caveats if we are identified as that, like we have to have a historic, historic advisory board We've got to have things in place right. for them. So I think that's what he's getting at is there are other other things. I think the right. gist I the gist of what you're saying is the conference went well. Um, we're still continuing to assess the cost, still continuing to assess the process and how we're going to do it. And the cost is really going to be the, the main driver in hopes that we find that from our economic consultant that we're going to hire. So right. the momentum's right. not stopped. It's just... Um, it's just that we have a lot more tools now and we also realize that there are a lot of different state departments and uh, regional departments that are willing to help us for free and give us money too. So in in terms of the finances of making this happen, you know, we have private investment and other government agencies that can help us, you know, with the funding and we, we don't have to take it all on ourselves. That, that is, I do want to make a differentiation though because that is going to be very far in view between of, of the total cost of the project. So just want to be careful that we don't mislead right. people to say that, you know, we're not going to have any, any cost. There's going to be a lot of cost. No, 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 no. So. I th based on the, uh, th their analysis, they said the municipalities are putting around 40, 45% of the, the investment. And then the rest of the investment is coming from elsewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions about this whole thing? Nope. That was great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. We will be yep. continuing to develop, you know, the specific steps as we find them out and we'll be continuing to update you. The planning board is working on the zoning district and you'll be also seeing that maybe in a few months. Awesome. Good job. Thank All you. right. Thank Go you. Ahead. All right. Um, anything else? Any other comments? Okay. Next up we have open topics. Um, does anybody have any? Nope. I have two. Oh my God. Okay. Just, uh, just a notice that I got from, uh, Waxhaw. We had a, this morning we have an alarm go off at whatever time it was about Mecklenburg doing, um, what do they call it? Stay at home, Stay at home order. Um, Waxhaw imposed the same order, which the way I read it, you can't even be on the streets. Um, in Waxhaw, unless it's for absolute necessary, whatever that means and stuff. And the, the mayor imposed that. Um, and that took effect, I think, the other day. I could read it for you. I could share that with you. However, um, Christina, 
and I think she, I got we got notice of that through Chaplin, right? Is a is something that I could possibly sign in. I would say that there's really no need, and because they had like they have issues where they have retail areas or gathering places. I, I couldn't really identify in Marvin just yet, other than the park, which we've closed as a gathering place for anyone to even consider imposing this. Um, but th I think Christina shared with me the order that came through for our neighboring town of Waxwell. So they've imposed it. Now Mecklenburg County has. And um, I just like to point out that my wife, I, you know, I said, that I, I don't really see a need, need to do that. Um, but there is some verbiage there, the resolution, or is it a resolution that they sent? That it was actually um, uh, ordered by the village of, uh, or the town of Waxhaw. But my wife reminded me before I left that uh, a lot of these spring breakers who are now kind of looking back and reflecting on uh, what they were doing and realizing how bad that was. And, and, and they actually said it was because and I think they used the term something about the old white hair guys, I guess the, the, the people in office or whoever um, weren't, didn't properly notify them how serious this was. And I think that's the, one of the things that, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know that that's what's happening around our towns. I don't see a need. I think council, you tell me if it's, there's a need to do a shutdown. I'd hate to get to a point where we can't even walk well, also, my understanding, even with Durham and, and all these other the larger cities, it's, it is a shutdown to say stay at home. My understanding is there's really not an enforcement of it. It's just a recommendation. Just, right. They cannot, they cannot or will not arrest you that for... Will. It's a class two misdemeanor. It, that's what I was getting ready to say because that was one thing that Charlotte or who I don't know if it was the I don't know if it was the Charlotte City Council or Mecklenburg County Commission that I was watching when they ordered the stay at home. The they had somebody there from the sheriff's department and they said you can absolutely if you were just out, you know, not on essential business and there's a whole list of what's considered essential, then you can be arrested for a misdemeanor now. Whether the DA decides to prosecute that or not, that's a whole nother bag, bag of, you know, ball of wax. But, I mean, it is, per what that meeting, they said in that meeting, it is a class two misdemeanor. The gentleman, the, I think it was the mayor from Durham, said that, you know, we're not out there actively arresting people if we see you driving. We're not, we're not going to pull you over and go in. Right. Yet. But they would go by the basketball courts and go, okay, guys, you have to you disperse. Right. If in the event that you go, I choose not to, then they yeah. can take some type of action. But anyway, I don't see the need in it because there's, we don't have a commercial district. We don't have yeah. gathering places. We've done what we can with the park. Um, and I think we're, yeah. I just think there's, there's something in place. I think Chaplin shared it with Christina. They forwarded it to me. I, I didn't like the signs. I was close to martial law, if you will. And I, I don't think yes. we're anywhere near that. But I think we just need to be smart. And we have been smart. It's based on what I've seen. There's a lot less traffic. There's really even in the stores, believe it or not, um, shopping at Costco. Believe, I was in South Carolina a couple of weeks ago shopping at Costco. They were letting so many people in at a time. And while I was in there, there was it almost seemed like nobody was in there. But... To that point, South Carolina, I know the governor imposed, you can't have three or more people, even on the beach. So Seabrook Island is basically going to impose their own thing and notify you walk on the beaches and like my family of five technically can't be together, even though we're sort of quarantining ourselves and being only with our own, you know, units. Well, so it's, it's just, I just wanted to bring it no, up to you guys so i didn't think it was there's a need to do anything or take any action hopefully it doesn't get to that point but we have something in place would that be correct yes we, if we, we need. yes and i would certainly consult with you guys before i just did it because it, i don't know if that's what you know uh but it, apparently the mayor has the right to do that and impose that mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. i just would what would want you guys to know that and stuff um thanks Jeff. The second point to this is 
that I wanted to bring this up. I'm a news junkie. I watch the news all the time. And I shared this with Christina yesterday. And this is just something that is just irking me. But, but how we get this across to our leaders uh, in, uh, above us, and I mean on the federal level, I would like to look into some sort of resolution where we could get put something in place that we share first check with the league would you say the league? the league the league as well as our legislators on the state level but we get this groundswell so how do we get the message to our people at the federal level um i understand that we, we are in unique times and in while we're in these unique times what has happened and and how much delay has happened in the last seven days because of um certain groups wanting to get their their pork if you want in this we're trying to pass a bill here at the federal level to help individuals and stuff i would like to see something or us take action as individuals because i am so frustrated with what has happened in these unique times if a national emergency is called and we have to take action on a federal level that is going to be money I would say is, and I understand that pork is always, you know, states want their things and that. In those circumstances, if there could be some a, a self-imposed law or legislation that they pass, that when we are under situations like we are, national emergency, that the bills that are passed are only for those, um, and I don't know how the wording would be, but those are only for that. And I'll give you a for instance. Somehow, one side of the aisle has taken advantage of this situation where we're passing a two trillion, 2.1 the last I heard, trillion dollar package. And in that package are um, millions of dollars going to the Kennedy Center. That's a perfect example. What that has to do with our, this serious situation that we're in, I, I can't fathom, but they're taking advantage of it because that's what the law allows that on certain bills. But what I'm trying to say is we can get a groundswell. I mean, the community, I don't know how they organize, but we can have our own grassroots, if you will. And then we create a resolution, share it with the neighboring towns. And then before you know it, maybe that's shared through all towns within the state of North Carolina. And that somehow goes to a point where we're notifying all we're asking, we're asking the state, or I'm sorry, our federal elected officials that in these unique times that we are, they're not allowed to add anything that has nothing to do with the, is that, am I making sense? No, you're making perfect sense. However, and the only thing I would say, it is perfect sense. I totally 100% agree with you. But as the Senate put together the framework of what in this particular instance, when the Senate put together... No, I, I, Hold on, I Bob. See what you're trying to say. Oh, I, I see what you're trying to say because um, the, um, you know, Mayor Lyles, way back when during the impeachment proceedings, uh, basically felt like, uh, you know, it was necessary for the council to uh, make some sort of resolution, you know, um, of some sort regarding the impeachment, you know, and, and that he should be impeached or wherever it would be. Uh, and and I, I see what you're trying to do, um, and, you know, and, and it ought to be interesting, you know, marching it up the ladder. I was on the phone um, with the governor uh, who was addressing, I don't know if anybody else was here, um, and, you know, it, it was pretty normal boilerplate. It wasn't, it was how to handle the stuff here at the ground level. But, yeah, when you see this stuff going on, yes. It's very frustrating. You begin to wonder what what the point of government and how it serves. Um, and uh, so, you know, I don't know what difference it's going to make. It'd be interesting to find out going through the league and then, you know, going up the, the ladder. Yep. And then uh, Councilman Lean was just in the middle of talking. I don't know if you heard him, so you kind of jumped on him. But that's a good point, and I'll let Jamie finish here. So Mitch McConnell actually put together the, the four pillars of framework in which they should only work by. And as politics would always seep in, whether you're right or left, they just said, I know that those are there, but we're not going to, we're going to still inject what we want, which ultimately went back to 
um, so the framework was there, but your politics is still politics. Yeah. So, but basically, it extended it. It extended it by five or six days. Yeah, it, it did, and it's like only because of uh, a party leader coming back and saying, "No, we don't want this." So, we, basically, the resolution I'm asking for is opposing uh, introduction of unnecessary and irrelevant issues pursuant to the crisis and emergency that we are facing. If they can sign that into law, because it's gonna it's gonna happen regardless of who has power, whether it's Republicans, Democrats, Independents, whoever has power. They're going to have the ability to kind of push things, but then now, you know, I mean, I, I know there was talk of some parties saying, hey, we have a, a situation here where some members of Congress can't show up because they've self quarantined. Let's take advantage of it because they need our votes. So let's get in what we want. They, they were asking for the world, and that's where I'm really concerned is they're, they're already identifying, they're putting this so fast together that they're already identifying that it's going to be more beneficial in the state of South Carolina to stay on unemployment because you're going to get reimbursed on unemployment more than you make. It's over $23 an hour they're paying and that the average person makes $15 an hour. So why go back to work? But my whole point to this is the irrelevant things that bills and I'm only talking, I understand how the sausage is made and they get agreements and that always happened. There's always pork in any bill. But when it comes down to a situation that is unprecedented where we have national emergencies, introducing these type of things. And again, if we can do a resolution and get other things, we, we throw it to your point, Bob, up the ladder, which is not necessarily, but how do you get groups to, you know, government? I think we can, we can show our concern at this level by a simple resolution and see if it takes you know, takes off and then, you know, then, then it, it be, becomes something that we're demanding that of our and be responsible. And I know there was a senator, just so you guys know, in Arizona that was proposing um, if they couldn't in the Senate get a bill passed, that they, their uh, pay be held until they could get a bill passed. So they're, you know, which was interesting, I thought, but, but then that's still not solving the problem. I think we're getting into what what is beyond what is reasonable for something of this crisis. That's all I'm saying. We could look at it. We can direct uh, Christina to look at it at, a, uh, um, at the league and also at the state legislature. But I just wanted to throw that out there because it was a concern. Um, or it was certainly a concern for me. Other than that, I, Bob, do you have anything else as far as open topics? No, uh, back to you, what you were saying regarding uh, where we stand with... Um this this home lockdown if that's the terminology or whatever um the i guess i know following the news like uh, like we all do and, and like you do um obviously it's mecklenburg county that uh, and i listened carefully with i guess her name is deanna dior if I, if I got her name right um that was saying that yes we're gonna in you know it's a second misdemeanor if you were found on the street uh, driving a car and it was it was 60 days in jail and the 2000 or $1,000 fine. But then she came out on the other end saying that, you know, we're not going to really enforce it, you know, uh, but, but let it be known there is a, there's a cost. Uh, and it was done on a county level. Um, and then here you are mentioning, which thank you for sharing about the mayor of Waxhaw. I would assume right now, because of the ruralness, Union County in its whole has not done that as Mecklenburg County has because it's obviously more, um, you know, there's, there, there's more density. Um, and it would be like, for example, Livingston, Wyoming, <laughs> you know, right? Uh, um, you know, Livingston, I mean, it's like you're out, you're out in Wy Wyoming and Montana. Why would you right. do that? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think to what even Jamie has said, I don't think, you know, we need to concerned about that i mean you know be walking down heritage oak lane yep seriously. no and i no. I, I, I want to encourage people to get out and i don't think we need to do anything i think that's what we've gotten to i just wanted to make you aware of it's it's happening out there there's something in place yeah. that we could quickly go to but i would say yeah. that i would consult with all of you individually before i would even consider anything like that because i don't think we're anywhere yeah. near that so all right Mayor, have you got any pressure uh or comments that you should make a statement uh, to the community. I know we have a website. It, it, have you been asked 
to address it in any way, you being the mayor? I, I have not. I think people are, you know, I, I understand this and the severity of it. I have not been asked. I'm taking guidelines from the Union County. We get reports from that. So nothing the really. County okay. hasn't, that county hasn't okay. come out and said anything. Like, we're taking our cues from, I mean, Mecklenburg County's coming out and doing this because they are, they're having a large outbreak. The same as Cabarrus County. They just have the, their yeah. two first deaths. We haven't, we barely had any cases in Union County. We haven't had any deaths. So as of last reason. week, Friday, I heard the commissioner yeah. said we had four. So, and so. that's like, that's why, I mean, I don't think Joe needs to go out and say anything. We've, no. like, we've put stuff out there on MailChimp. We put it on Nextdoor. Hey, we're here for you. Here's numbers to call if you need yeah. us. But besides that, I don't mean. And. Less government is more. Union County will let us know if they need us to issue the like the declaration. They 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 pretty much hold our hand through the process. They did that with the hurricane and 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 that sort of thing. So if they need something from us, they will they will yeah, let us know. Yeah. So okay. Okay. All right. Um, final thing: review of action items. Barbie. I can handle that if you want me to, Barbie. Sure. Go ahead. So first thing: taxation breakdown on the village hall uh, slash church property. Off-duty patrol will stop until further notice and staff will continue to assess. Uh, work session annexation plan. The next work session will have the annexation plan slash package, identify parcels, and also discuss um, fee schedules associated with the park. We will add one full-time police officer or law enforcement officer and the associated tax increase into fiscal year 2021. We will contract... Um, We'll negotiate the contract changes as mentioned in the meeting with Union County and Chaplin. We will work on and also continue to assess the meeting minutes for uh, fiscal year 1314 to figure out why we dropped officers during that time. We will assess a street light policy and respond to the complainant that had the request on Waxhaw Marvin uh, Bonds Grove. Um, we will Ask AMT to assess Village Hall lease and savings that are associated with any um, groundwork, water sewer, anything that they can help with uh, to solidify that cost a little more. We will add the question of aggressive dogs to the leash law, frequently asked questions, and repost to the internet or the website. And then I will work on a budget amendment for the All Works contract for the $1,000 uh, differential if needed. And we will update the official schedule and post the uh, new meetings. New meeting location. And we will add action items to the next agendas. Oh, I guess we need to change that. All right. Did I forget anything, Barbie? No. Okay. Council comments, Bob? <clears throat> uh, no, other than, uh, uh, you know, I thank you very much for accommodating me uh, to be, you know, participating remotely uh, during these times. And, uh, you know, personally, uh, with my wife and I were being very cautious uh, regarding our ages and, and health conditions. So I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is heartening uh, is the rapid pace in which uh, a lot of the things that we're talking about, closing up donut holes, uh, addressing the, the, you know, police force, um, the, you know, where we're at with the village hall or the village, the village hall and the heritage district, how we seem to be going at a rapid pace, uh, accomplishing things. And it's, it's good to see we're not getting hung up. We're addressing issues, uh, whether they come to pass or not, we're addressing them. So, um, I'm, I'm glad to be participating with all of you to make all of this happen. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Jamie? No, I just, I, the only comment what I would have that with the severity of everything that's going on, I think the local, state, and federal government um, have done a tremendous job, and we won't see the, the, the final results of it for some time to come, but I think they've done a tr tremendous job as far as getting on top of it, taking the actions that they've taken, the, the testing stuff that's out there, the bringing together of, of, of manufacturing companies that to come up with new um, and innovative 
ways to address this whole thing. I think they've done a tremendous job to include President Trump and his administration. I mean, this could be, this could really have turned out really bad, and not saying that it's not, but it could have been a, a heck of a lot worse. And uh, so I commend all government agencies that have stepped up and, and, and addressed this, to include ours here, um, for putting all this stuff together and information and coordinating, you know, everything that's uh, going on to, to put this meeting in place. So that's it. Thank you, Councilman. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, good meeting. Bob, we missed you, but glad you're on the phone. Staff, thank you as always. Um, to all of the Marvin residents and North Carolinians, as we all are, be safe, be smart, don't go out and do anything silly. This is a very extraordinary time um, in our lives, and uh, we, we know that it, it is stressful and can be trying, so um, just, you know, remain patient and vigilant and take care of yourselves. Thank you, Kim. Um, I'd like to thank staff too, uh, particularly Christina, as we have worked with her. And I know staff, there's a lot of concerns on your part as far as working and stuff. Um, and Christina, you know, we're kind of leaving it to you to kind of make a range for times and working and, and the changes that are all being communicated with the community as far as appointments and, and how we're, uh, we're taking our precautions. So thank you, staff and Christina, for uh, continuing that. Uh, thank you to the new committee members for the website stepping up on, on, uh, for helping out Noonan Camp, Culp, Black, and Chuck Roddy, Chuck Roddy, I guess it is, um, for stepping up and, and, and volunteering their time and, and efforts to improving uh, part of our community, which is the website. Um, thank you, Rohit and John Jones as well for taking the initiative to attend the uh, NC Main Street Conference and spending a couple days out there. That's real important and integral part of uh, uh, moving this community forward and making Marvin a, the special place it is. Also, um, just finally, um, you know, we are in difficult times here and I, I, I'd like to encourage all our citizens to just be smart. Um, take it upon ourselves to do your own small part, whatever it is. Uh, follow the, the guidelines of CDC, local, state, and federal government. Um, you know, uh, it, one of the reasons China and South Korea were supposedly very effective in, 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 in reducing that curve and in, in, in leveling that curve is because they're authoritarian society where they were basically told we are in the U.S. a free society. We'd like to keep it that way as much as possible, but it's all depending on the community to do their part, individuals to do their part. And I think that message is getting acro across and I appreciate all the things that people in our community are doing and even stepping up for that matter, hover way and, and participating. I got a call from one uh, individual who uh, has a, a line on uh, uh, her family manufacturing shirts and they are now manufacturing um, masks. I put them in touch with Union County leaders to, to address our situation here because they've already taken orders from other states. Why not help out us? So I encourage anyone who has any connections within the community to reach out to me or to our staff. We'll put them in touch with Union County individuals that can help with that. With that, I'll need a uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. <clears throat> All's, in All's in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, everyone.